Welcome, everyone. Welcome. This is, uh, it's sort of our first Magic Box session, kind of. We're still promoting the course. Enrollment's still open for another week. But, uh, but this is, uh, you know, it's kind of like we're doing class. That's very exciting. Nice to have everybody here. We got all the mentors. Has some fantastic artists. Uh, all of them. Uh, friends of mine and students of mine and uh, wonderfully talented folks. It's going to be nice to introduce you to them. Thank you for coming, those of you that are attending live. We are open for enrollment at magicboxacademy.com. Magicboxacademy.com. You can go there. You can see a course overview video and uh, get the FAQ, download the syllabus. And if you have any other questions about the course, my amazing team, it's, I mean, it's, it's actually inconceivable. I cannot get my head around how good you are. <laughs> You're so good. Uh, can you wave uh, and say hi, Mari and Mona? Where, hi. There you are, waving. And say, say hi, Mari, so you pop up on the- uh, Hello. Zoom. There you are. Yeah. Mari and Mona are going to be answering questions in the chat. If you have any questions about the magic box, or if you have any questions about the topics that we're discussing during the portfolio reviews or the interview, just uh, post them in the chat there. And the, um, the team will be responding, but uh, you know, we might also have some that we want to uh, respond to on mic. We'll be reviewing five portfolios today visual development, concept art, illustration, and environment art. Getting all taxonomical there. It's a, going down the categorization tree into specialization. Uh, environment art portfolios today. And we're going to have a breakthrough case study. This is exciting. We've done this before in the past, um, and I, I just find it to be... Uh, I think it's underrated in how revelatory it can be. Uh, Andrea is here to explain the moment that she's having right now. She's having a moment and we're all excited about it. And, uh, and so I asked her, you know, what you're going through right now is a real time, real life example of exactly what this course is designed to help people accomplish. Could you come on and talk about that? And so Andrea is here today to, to discuss that. So that's going to be cool. We'll do that right at the middle. I want to introduce our mentors. Amy Lewis, can you raise Hello. your hand and say hi? There you are. Hey. Uh, Amy Lewis is here. Amy's an animation art director and environment painter with credits on SpongeBob, Moomin Valley, The Unstoppable Yellow Yeti, and more. And one of my favorite human beings on this entire planet. I'm going to blush, stop it. Well, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's mutual. In the Magic Box Prestige portfolios, you, you have pre-recorded lessons that you can go through on your own schedule. Then you do the assignment. There's a homework assignment. Then you do the assignment, and then you can sign up for a Zoom session, session just like this, where you can go get feedback from the mentors. Additionally, every Saturday, we do this. What we're doing right now, we do this every Saturday. And I'm there, at least, it's at least me, and I'm there to provide additional guidance, answer questions. And I mean, I, I think mostly my feeling is that my, my gut feeling is that really it's going to be mostly about pep talks and encouragement and staying motivated. That might not be true. We'll see. That's, you know, you never know until the actual students are here. We have, uh, I think, 18 enrolled right now, and we've got room for a few more. And, uh, and so I think it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be really special to share that time with you on Saturdays. And then also when I just show up unannounced to the mentors feedback sessions, uh, to troll them, <laughs> that's <Yay>. basically, <laughs> that's my plan just to show up and troll. Uh, no, it's not true. Um, my <laughs> point in saying this is, is to set up Amy's live session, but on, there is a Saturday. In fact, next Saturday, July 8th, you're with me here yep. and we're talking about two hot topics. 
Yes. Not just one. One, to- one hot topic is not enough when Amy Lewis is in the room. You oh, need we need least, two. <laughs> at least two <laughs> hot topics. One is um, color scripting because mm-hmm. you have a tremendous amount of experience in, in uh, color keys and color scripting uh, as an art director, but also, and this is the really juicy one, common mistakes that new hire artists make when working with an art director. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are those kinds of things that, you know, this is, this is in the category of I wish I'd known then what I know now, except you can know it then, which yeah. is now. Does that make sense? Time travel is confusing. Yeah. Bradley, comma, Chris. Hello. I refer to him as Bradley <laughs> to uh, avoid confusion. Chris is such an uncommon name. It's just a weird coincidence that both I, of us are named Chris. Right. I mean, I, the, the chances. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> uh, you are a concept artist and you work for, you know, I mean, one theme park is not enough for Chris Bradley. No. <laughs> You got to work for all of them. All the theme parks. You have to work for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. When when all else fails, work for everybody. <laughs> just like, you know, when you can't decide as to who you want to work for, just just choose them all. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah it's career <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah, so Chris has uh, worked for both Disney and Universal and as I said on the um announcement video, the invitational video when I announced this uh live session, um, it is entirely possible, so exciting to think about this, that one of us in this room may have spilled ice cream on something that you helped to design. In fact, if you've if you've been to Florida in the last like year and a half, I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. I can so almost <laughs> guarantee it. A lot of ice cream being spilled yeah. in Florida. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Ice cream gets spilled. I'm just saying. And they asked me to paint places where they serve ice cream. So, you know, it's yeah. very likely. <laughs> It's like very likely. It's very um, likely. You're going to be talking on August 15th. And in addition to the feedback sessions, which happen every week, and the mentors are covering those feedback sessions, we have two, currently two mentors a week doing separate sessions on separate days. And then uh, so you can book uh, feedback with them if you're in the course. But then additionally, we have a live session together on August 15th where you're going to be talking about uh, designing environments that invite exploration. Now that you, maybe other people say this, but that you, you put that in my brain. Oh. <laughs> invite exploration. Yeah. Is that a weenie thing? Is that what that? Uh, uh, no, yes, yes. And no, um, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be specifically like, like a thing that invites you to uh to oh, okay. explore like it can be a mood it can be a whole bunch oh. of different things right okay um if you th- if you think about the way uh queue lines work in theme parks like they don't you can't always see the big payoff from the very right. beginning right so what makes you go around that corner what makes you want to want to keep looking to see and eventually you'll get to the to the big payoff but well, i would like to know the answer to that question uh, later. Yeah. Um, on August 5th, it provided that I, <laughs> yeah, provided um, that I'm not in jail. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> what is it? This, is this a risk? Should we have gotten insurance? <laughs> um, <laughs> lamb, it's lamb insurance. When one of your mentors <laughs> is on the lamb, you, <laughs> you need coverage. Yeah. Okay. Weenie, by the way, is uh that's a Walt Disney term. Go look it up. It's, it's actually insightful. It's not a, it's not a very, good term <laughs> but it's a but it's a really insightful concept okay veronica kazowski hello welcome welcome thank you for being here you um so veronica tell us about tyrus wong and your and your relationship to him oh man tyrus wong is one of my biggest inspirations mm-hmm. i mean like Ever since childhood, obviously, I loved Bambi, but like once I became an artist and once I became, you know, professional, like he's just, I look up to him so much and I can nerd out and geek out about, you know, all the atmosphere and all the brushy stuff and all the beautiful disappearing edges and just like, (laughs) ah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So that 
what just happened right then is a little preview of what's going to happen on August nineteenth <laughs> with Veronica. It's gonna it's gonna be fun. Oh it's yeah, about, <laughs> about painting techniques. Veronica, you re recently broke in mm -hmm. the animation industry at Factory Create. Folks, do yes. good work. Do good work over there. Um, and uh, and so it's exciting to have your perspective, not just having you know worked on an actual production now, but well, and actually a couple of now at this point, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but also to have that perspective of what's it like breaking in right now. You know, this is something that I love about teaching in general, because I think that though I never, as I age, I don't want to be like, I'm okay being not cool, you know, like I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm not trying to kind of keep up in that way, but there is something just uh, one of the, greatest thing, joys of the classroom is being able to, um, you know, understand, well, to be, to be, I guess, stay grounded in a way. And, uh, and I think this is uh, a concept that benefits us in life, but I think it's a concept that benefits us in education as well. And so, you know, this is something we really value here. And that is having people with, you know, whatever, 10, 15 years of experience and people with like two, you know, cause we got to know sometimes examples go out of date <laughs> <laughs> especially when the world moves so fast uh so yeah so we're gonna geek out about painting techniques on august 19th ah uh, yeah <laughs> all of these i meant to mention your music too amy i forgot that but folks seriously oh, you, just go follow amy on i mean the paintings you know we come for the paintings but we stay for the guitar that uh... I mean, holy moly I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my highlights on Instagram and just just delete them. No, 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 no. please, please. I I mean there's times where cuz Amy will sometimes send me work in progress videos and I'll just listen to it on a loop. Literally, I'll just like loop it and just listen to it over and over and over again. And it's like this is like a a musical sketch, but it's just incredible. Anyway, so yeah. folks, yeah. Thank it, you. Yeah. Thanks for that, Chris. <laughs> I wanted to yeah, I wanted to share that. Okay. What else? So those are our mentors, everybody. Welcome, welcome team, welcome mentors. And then we'll, uh, we'll meet our artists as they come in, our guest artists here for the portfolio reviews. I wanna tell a story, if you'll indulge me for a moment. I was at CTNX, it's an animation expo in Burbank. I was there a few years ago and uh, this artist, walks up to me in tears, just tears streaming down her face. And she's holding her portfolio and her hands are trembling. And she walks up, she's like, hi, Chris, I love your podcast. Would you mind giving me a portfolio review? <laughs> I'm like, what a pro. I mean, you know, she's <laughs> obviously going through something and yet here she is still trying to make the most of the moment. And so I said, are you okay? And she said, I just had a really rough portfolio review. And uh, I said, do you want to talk about it? And she said, yeah. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll flip through your work and then just share whatever you want to share about what they said. So I'm flipping through her work and I'm seeing these gorgeous paintings. They're, they were so beautiful and they were so um, charming. And I was looking through these and I was going, this is a kid lit portfolio. It's, it's for children's book illustration. And it's very strong. And that's just kind of what's going through my head as I'm listening to her. And she says, uh, yeah, so I took this portfolio to this person down there. And they're flipping through it and they go, you know, I don't like your figure drawing. I don't like your perspective. You need to get a lot more, a lot more structure. You need to work on your values. You need to on and on and there. And they just kept saying like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't. And I'm just like, oh, wait. I mean, first of all, that's just mean. This is mean. Second of all, it's dumb. It's dumb. This person being dumb. I, I looked at the portfolio and I said, that doesn't make any sense to me. This uh, work is so strong. I said, by any chance, is this other artist 
a concept artist because I had a feeling based on the things they were telling her she should, quote, finger quotes, should have in her portfolio um, that they were a concept artist because they were asking for concept arty kinds of things. And she said, yeah. And I said, does this artist do like spaceships and like dark sci-fi stuff? And she said, yeah. And I said, they didn't take a single moment to ask what your career aspirations were, did they? And she said, no. She said, they, I had to hand them my portfolio and they just started in on, on this rant. And I said, you know, your work is very strong. Don't listen to that person. They're a butthead. I think I said something other than butthead. And, um, <laughs> and, and I was like, don't listen to them. You're trying to do something totally different. They are so egocentric. They're so caught up in their own myopic way of seeing, you know, the world of professional art that all they can see is the job they themselves do. It is so obvious that that is not the job you're trying to do. That is not the career you're trying to pursue. And yet they couldn't see that. They just came in with their assumptions and, uh, and they created a harmful experience. They actually caused harm. It wasn't just like a benign mistake. They actually hurt this person. And so she actually, by this point, had stopped crying and she, her composure changed. And I mean, her face lit up. I mean, it was like a, it was a moment. And, um, and so we don't do that here. We don't do that here. We collaborate with us, with our students. We collaborate. My parents are very accomplished, um, very effective elementary, middle, and high school teachers. They teach music in public school. Well, they're both retired now. But um, just to give you an idea of how meaningful my parents were as teachers to their students, my dad's birthday is June 20th. And when I was a kid, we could never leave the house on his birthday to go do anything out of the house. You know, phones were still mounted to the wall in that time, right? We could never leave the house because we had to stay by the phone all day because literally all day the phone would ring and many of the people calling were my dad's former students who are you know in college or grown up now and they're calling just to wish him a happy birthday and remind him what a difference he made in their lives this is what i witnessed as a kid my mom says a good teacher is not the sage on the stage they're the guide on the side. They're not the sage on the stage. They're the guide on the side. And in this industry, there is a hell of a lot of sage on the stage. Idol worship, hero worship. Just what I would give to just be in the room with this amazing person. You know, and it's this sort of like religious thing. Um, I think that can be entertaining. I'm not, I'm skeptical about how effective it is compared to a guide on the side approach. And that's why we do things the way we do them here in the magic box. This is a popular mindset in portfolio reviews. I can't tell you the number of portfolio reviews and folks, I've been reviewing portfolios <laughs> for two decades plus, you know, it started going back to my alma mater and then soon became formalized te teaching. I've taught at universities, I've done speaking engagements all over the world. This happens all the time. Someone hands me a portfolio and they go, just rip it apart. Don't be afraid to rip it apart. Don't hold back. And to that, I always say, when was the last time you had surgery? Is that what you said to your surgeon? Don't be afraid to just rip it apart, doc. I know we need to make some adjustments for my health. <laughs> I know we got to make some changes, but just rip it apart. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to just rip it apart. Where is the progress and development and growth in rip it apart?
we focus on strengths, strengthen the student's strengths. If you, fo if you strengthen your strengths, your weaknesses improve also. I find that if you focus on your weaknesses, one, you get depressed. And two, it's never going to be as effective as strengthening your strengths. You are right now the artist that you're going to be. The things that are strong about you right now are the things that are going to be strong about you continually throughout your career. Those things are just going to strengthen. All of the mentors here, the guest artists here, are all living proof of that. It's hard to see ourselves sometimes. That's where a mentor comes in. Nonetheless, your strengths are the ones that are just going to continue to strengthen throughout your career. It's just that you're going to become more confident, more sure of yourself. And sure, your skill set will expand. You'll learn new things. You'll try new things. Obviously, I mean, self-expansion is the reason we're artists, right? Of course, we're going to experience self-expansion. But your core strengths, who you are, that's what people are going to connect with. Our motto here is that if we're not changing lives, we're not doing our jobs. I think education should be synonymous with transformation, but not the kind of transformation that has you graduate with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, ill-equipped to actually succeed as a professional. I think that's a bad kind of transformation, and we should bring an end to that. But I do think that education should be synonymous for transformation. And if transformation is not happening, then there's a failure somewhere. So I say all this to contextualize what we're going to do today. Will I, I mean, not because all of these folks are my current students, I'm going to hang back and be more of the host and the connector. I will chime in when certain topics come up or if something comes to mind. But I'm just going to get out of the way of the mentors and and here and I'm going to try to, you know, um, keep things going. But all of us are on the same page. We're all focused on a collaborative relationship with the, with the artist whose work we're giving feedback on and even critiquing, you know, critique. It takes the sting out of it when you know it's a collaboration, right? When you know the person isn't there to be abusive when they're not coming in with their own hubris but instead it's a partnership to just look at the work and go here's what could be improved so we're going to take that approach and the approach is not just changing lives because i know concept art so i'm going to try to make you into a concept artist but rather what is the kind of future you are trying to create we're going to help you create that kind of work that creates the future that you want rant over hey rami hey chris good to have good you to here you. good to rami. be here <laughs> rami uh i'm just gonna say this all day long but you know you were one of my favorite people on this entire planet it's just it's just this room full of my favorite people you're just you're an amazing person rami you uh you have some very impressive credits now on your resume, and yet you're still pushing. Um, you have a painting-focused visual development portfolio. Visual yeah, development nice. portfolio, focused on painting, light color, texture, edges, those kinds of things. So that's what we'll be looking at today with Rami's portfolio. If we could, thank you, Mona. Mona just put um, Rami's website and Instagram handle in the chat there, so everybody can go check that out. I'm going to screen share here and bring up your um, your portfolio, Rami, and then I'll hand it over to the mentors and we'll just sort of uh, chime in if it seems appropriate. Yeah. Chris, uh, it goes both ways. <laughs> you know that. Mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. also one of my uh, favorite people. And oh. uh, this is like, uh, you know, I've been in Magic Box One and that's, that's 2015, right? Bonkers. Yeah, yeah. And so like this is like this feels very surreal to me, but it's also it has this palpable feeling of progress. <laughs> so yeah. it's very exciting to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your work has just I mean, your work was strong. There were things I remember. I, re I remember when you because you emailed me 
or post we had a Facebook group. Um, it was, remember Facebook? Um, <laughs> I'd rather not. Uh, um, uh, no, that was, but we had a good time. And I mean, it used to be a good place to, you know, have people come together. Um, yeah, we had a Facebook group and I, maybe you posted it there. Or maybe you emailed it to me. I seem to remember an email, but uh, I remember your first few pieces and, and going, wow, this, so artist has talent, but then, yeah, it's just become so sophisticated now. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking and hand it over to the, uh, the mentors. What were your thoughts, Amy Lewis, when you first, um, went over Rami's portfolio? Wow. And by the way, sorry, Amy, just tell me if you want me to go to a particular piece. Otherwise I'll just, um, okay. Kind of scroll through here. Cool. Well, the first thing that I, in general, that I always think when I, uh, look at a portfolio is, you know, what does this say to me? Who is the, this artist? Um, what is their art, art trying to accomplish? And straight away, when I looked at Rami's, it's just, you know, you are a painter and, you know, I can imagine that you're looking for work that's, you know, in colour design, uh, colour keys, colour scripts, um, concept art. And yeah. you've just got so many beautiful, beautiful painted pieces here. I really like the Hansel and Gretel one where... Um, where is it? The one where that one, I love that so much because just the edge, the edge, the edges and the, the colors are just the lighting, everything. It's just so beautiful. Um, and you've got, you know, it's not all overly detailed. It's just detailed in the right places where you want to look. Um, it's just gorgeous. It sort of screams to me a little bit of Mary Blair sort of vibe. And I love Mary Blair so much. Was she uh, an inspiration for this or? Well, I really love Mary Blair, but it's yeah. just not, I, I don't think like I had her in mind, but it's okay. just, maybe I have her in my subconscious. Always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't we She's all? She's just that yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like Tyrus Wong for me, like when uh, Veronica was like, it's, yeah, I admire him much the same. So yeah, I guess like she is uh, a big idol for me. Wonderful. Um, yeah. do you when you're when you're painting these uh, these pieces do you always so for this for this one to Hansel and Gretel um, do you always think of a story that's already out there or do you make your own sometimes as well and then develop artwork from your own yeah well I mean for Hansel and Gretel the, uh, I, I was trying to follow the uh, the already existing story but it was also I think a magic box uh, prompt where we uh want to do it in a new fresh way yeah uh and that's what i came up with i'm not sure like how fresh the idea is it's just that i wanted to to make my own version of it like how i felt because uh this story in itself goes back way back to my childhood like i remember like uh, my mother singing the, <laughs> the story for us and it's uh plays in my head but like for the uh, for the new for uh, for this one, the Falcon Lore, like I'm trying to come up with something that doesn't have a story yet, and it's like image based. Like, okay, what do I feel? Um, like the characters, like which um, environment they're be in. So I'm trying to inspire, like get inspired by uh, a hike that I did actually in back in Jordan near the Dead Sea. And I saw these like beautiful rock formations and like this is where the idea started started and I I mean just thinking like yeah to there's no story but I'll just yeah. try to develop the story roughly as I go along yeah do it visually so I love, yeah. I love that I love how I love for me if I see a piece that makes me feel something I know that you know you've done something right and I, I am the same with you I often don't have a story with a piece of art that I'm making. I, I have a feeling and I try and capture that feeling. Um, and I, I, I get a lot of different feelings from, from these pieces. I get a lot of uh, calm and peacefulness when I look at this one, for example. Yeah. Um, I just love your brush strokes. Your, just the, the use of the, the different types of brush strokes you've got there and the, the light that's caught on the, um, the, the tree leaves there. This is beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah thank um, you. I know that you've taken a lot of mentorships at the OE Academy and um, I can tell that, you know, you've referenced this very well because like Chris always says, you know, don't fly blind. 
Mm. Um, you can tell, you know, you've got that light bouncing off those leaves and how the light reflects off that bird perfectly. Um, you know, if you just guessed how that looked, it'd probably just look flat and yeah. unrealistic. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Veronica well, Bradley, you... anything uh, you want to contribute? Hey, Raleigh, what's, yeah. your, what's your dream job? Well, it would be in visual development, honestly. But sure. I mean, like for the next for the next uh, um, step, I guess I'm aiming for uh, background uh, design. Background design, okay. Yeah. Um. So I I just to build off of what Amy was saying, um, I think I think what you've got is is beautiful, and I think that we could we could work a little bit on on tweaking it uh, just a touch to to communicate a little bit more clearly. Oh, it's could you go back to uh that first piece with the with the moonlight that Amy was talking about? I I agree with everything she said here. I think that that's, you know, there's some beautiful painting in here. Um, um my thought is is the are the areas that are the most beautiful where you want us to look? You know what I'm saying? Like that that beautiful light on those leaves on the tree at the very top, is that the most important part of this painting for what you're trying to communicate? <laughs> okay. I see what you mean. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think you, you know, I think in general, you you're showing with your portfolio that you're you're capable of painting things beautifully and you're capable of making pictures that are um that are making us feel something have they have a distinct mood and you're capable of composing an image that reads very clearly so to build upon those strengths now let's talk about what the picture is saying and where you want us to look and in what order do you want us to look so let's use those skills that you've got but uh let's do like very purposefully focusing them on the exact thing you're trying to tell us, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So like if everything is painted equally, you know, and, and everything has an equal level of detail, um, we want to look everywhere, right? But our job as artists is not to, is not to have people look everywhere. It's to have people, look at the very specific things that we're trying to show them to tell the story, right? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the the overall feeling is that you are are very capable. Um, but it's the it's the control over that capability that that I think will be the the thing that sort of unlocks for you whatever the whatever the next big thing is, right? Yeah. Veronica, anything before we wrap up? Yeah, I was going to chime in kind of on the tail end of Chris's thing that um, I think one of the things I was really responding to with this one in particular is the beauty with which you designed the shapes and light on that falcon. And since you mentioned you're really kind of looking into, you know, backgrounds and environments, I think that's something you could really lean into with uh, the environments too. So like looking at the waterfall, for example, like I can just picture how you could apply some of that beautiful, you know, brushy textural stuff where you're kind of going to downplay some of the detail maybe, but bringing in that beautiful light design and bringing in that beautiful, you know, brush design and brushwork you have and thinking about, you know, like what uh, Bradley was saying, where like you could really hone in like which parts of this environment object do I want to make in focus and which ones do I want to kind of recede and really access that through that beautiful light and color design you already have, if that makes sense, Rami. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a very important um, topic. I'm glad we're bringing it up, but because like, I do want to have a, like a level of finish to mm -hmm. the whole piece. To the whole piece so i like like i i i really understand what uh, what chris bradley is saying but like my intent was to have a like a polished 
piece. <laughs> and so I focused on everything and I, and I tried to, to like direct the focus and attention using compositional tools and values. Oh, that's if definitely that's... showing. I think mm -hmm, in this yeah. one, like my eye just goes straight to where you wanted me to look with that falcon and stuff. But yeah, so I think it's a lot of like with your work, Rami, I'm really responding to a lot of these beautiful choices. And I think it's just like looking at what's the most successful and looking at, you know, what parts you're really, you know, like you just feel like you got that ah moment with that paint and then looking for ways to plus the rest. So it really has that feeling um, like something that comes to mind in the Hansel and Gretel ones is um, with the tree design. Um, I was looking at those trees and you've got such beautiful design on the trunks. Um, skip, I think one further, Chris, it's the pencil with well, this one too, but it's the one with the pencil designs. Uh, you mean the, the yes. one? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. this one. Um, so I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, cool. Like you've got some really cool shapes going on. You've got some really cool root designs and like, you know, things going on. But then I think the canopy is just kind of, you know, textured. And I would love to see what you could do with, you know, like bringing that design from like the more updated Falcon lore pieces into something yeah. like this, where you go and you really take the time to like, which things are going to drop back, which things are going to push forward and how am I going to get to there with, you know, how I'm turning the form with those like color and light choices in a painting and then the black and white ones, obviously with the design. Yeah. I, I think you can have your cake and eat it too, Rami. I think you look at Loish's work, for example, and you know, everything is really polished. She does these really gestalt pieces and yet the, you know, it's always clear what the piece is about. You know what I mean? I think there are, there are techniques that you can employ um, and we can talk about this more, you know, in class in, in specific, but I think there are techniques that you can employ to, yeah, to be able to have, to achieve that polished look that you're going for, but also, and using, and like you said, using composition value, hue, saturation, et cetera, to create the focal point more so than the, uh, than, than a looseness so to speak. I do think yeah. that's possible. Um, and I, then that part, I think you already really have, there's a lot of familiarity there. You know how to do that part, but I think there's just a, a one missing piece there, which is, I think really what Veronica was just getting at there, which is this idea of the, yeah, the gestalt, the unity of design, the total continuation of design, you know, the Frank Lloyd Wright mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I add something really small to, to that? Please. Yeah. We have a, another couple, two minutes. Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that what could what could really strengthen this portfolio, so to add to what you've already got, is to do a few pieces that are looser, that are quicker, that are experiment like experimenting and developing and exploring a start a, a feeling or a mood, um, but through a you know a quicker, looser iteration of a polished piece. So before you go into polishing it, lots of lots of loose uh, explorations. Because what I found personally from my own experience is that doing the visual development and um, development for, for TV and shows and stuff like that, you tend to do a lot more quicker, looser pieces um, rather than fully polished ones. Because maybe you'll get to do one polished one, but a yeah. lot of the time, it, 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 you know, a lot of the work comes from trying to create the mood and the feeling from very quick pieces. Process. Um, yeah, pro the process, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's really helpful, because <clears throat> I'm finishing up the the project here in France, and so for the next few months, I'm gonna do my portfolio like full time. <laughs> so awesome. this 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 review couldn't come at a better <laughs> time. That's fantastic. Nice. So yeah, great. Yeah. So yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, um, thank you, Rami. Yeah. And stuff. A yeah, beautiful again, we'll... work, Rami. Yeah. I'd look at it all day. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is so winsome. You know, it's just such winsome work. It it really, yeah, it's honest and it's accessible. It you know, there's a pleasure in entertaining the audience, evident in the work. I mean, it really is. Oh, and like I I think Bradley, you were the one I think kind of pointing this out, but it's like there's story happening there. You know, 
it's like oh for sure go off and it's like we're not even having you know um this sense of story yet and so there's just the story is just corner to corner you know yeah 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 it's it's in it's infused with with w- what you're trying to tell us for mm-hmm. sure it, every every bit of it is um you know it is is very clear as to the you're you're drawing us into the world of this of the story you're trying to tell and i think it's i think it's very strong in that way for sure yeah thank you. awesome well thank you rami and again we'll we'll link to all your all your uh locations in uh, yeah. in in the chat and also after we post the recording all right okay fantastic well we have nostaron up next hello with a concept art portfolio and um nostaron you've been on a journey lately of of trying to define focus for yourself do you think that's accurate to say yes yes exactly yeah can you tell us a little bit about that prior to us bringing up the work um well um you might think that i'm in- interested in uh, working in video games but uh while i do love video games uh it's not what i'm mostly passionate about uh what what got me into drawing was visual development storytelling and illustration uh even when um even the video games that I like are more on the animation animation look inside. So um, yeah, I do enjoy line arts and stuff like that. But uh, it's uh, at the moment it's really hard for me to define myself like where, oh, what kind of an artist I am. Yeah. Well, let's take a look and see what the mentors have to say. Um screen sharing here bear with me i clicked on the wrong button there we go okay um bradley would you do us the honor of taking the lead on this one sure um yeah are you gonna scroll through all of them there we there we go i i uh i love this stuff i i was looking at it all last night um you have you have such a great sort of variety of what's happening here what i'll ask the same question what what is the dream gig like if if somebody could hand you a the perfect project today what what would it be um i would say visual development for uh you know in the game project or in the animation with a very small team that's what what, what i really enjoy okay um I think when you say when you say visual development, can we can we can I bug you to drill down just a little bit more? Like if you think about the different aspects of visual development, like like if I were the art director and I was handing you something, you know, do you want to do the color keys? Do you want to do the you know? Do you want to take anything? Do you want to just figure out what the what the main character's bedroom looks like? what do you what are you drawn to the most within the world of visual development um yeah mostly character design and thinking about how the character interacts with their environment and also designing the environments but uh having those characteristics in mind got it okay cool um because i one of the things that i thought i i thought when i looked at your work was just that you know your one of the strengths you're you're communicating to me someone who doesn't know you at all is that you can jump in and make stuff happen in a variety of different areas right you've got you've got walk cycles you've got line drawings of backgrounds you've got like what we're scrolling through here these beautiful little tokens and things for games like you 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 really can excel in any sort of thing that somebody throws at you and i feel like that it comes across like this this i I don't know how to say it be older game yes it doesn't look anything like what's what else is in your portfolio but it's so charming and fun and i don't know how to do this stuff like i you know like i don't know how to make that little b guy go and he's great (laughs) 
<laughs> he's really good. Um, so I, I, I would say that you're at you're at this point that I think a lot of artists get to, where you are capable of going in a bunch of different directions, mm -hmm. but really need to think about like the direction you really want to go, mm -hmm. and then how can we simultaneously create pieces that take us in that direction, and then maybe edit out some of the things that portfolio wise that sort of show that feature your capability rather than your passion mm -hmm. right yeah um like these walk cycles and stuff I mean this is just great <laughs> like look at her strutting through the strutting through the forest like that's that's amazing um uh so I think to be honest finding some finding a way to to do like the visual development stuff and the character design stuff that you said and bring mm -hmm. that to the forefront and maybe maybe the walk cycles uh, can sort of fade back in the portfolio right like that's a second mm -hmm. that's a secondary skill set is being able to like you want to be able to design the character but then also maybe if you need me to fill in I can help animate it a little bit right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um I love the I love the pigeon. Gosh, the pigeon is so fun. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and I think I'll let the you know the other mentors are more more much more uh, uh, experienced with character design than I am for sure. But I think even Oats, could you scroll back down to the the trees real fast that you, that you did in three D like that. If yeah, if you scroll down just just a little bit, that tree right there, like mm -hmm. that's such a that's such a cool tree, mm -hmm. and if it's it's an asset, like it's built in three D, right? Um, yeah. So I I think like even with a tree, even this tree is a character, right? And so it would be cool to see, you know, five or six different versions of this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, 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 and and you could even think of it like on a scale of charisma like here's 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 um you know a more a little bit less charismatic and then there's five different versions that are and the and the fifth one is like the craziest most charismatic version of that tree right mm -hmm. and you know it, it, that way you're sh you're showcasing that your priority is is the design instead mm -hmm. of the execution of the thing mm -hmm. Uh, so should I keep uh, all these different um, things in my portfolio to show that I have these skills or? Um, uh... <laughs> I think you're, port you're, oh, sorry. your portfolio is super strong and it's going to get you the type of work that's already in your portfolio. Mm -hmm, so if you, yeah. if you don't ever want to do a walk cycle ever again, take the walk cycles out. If mm -hmm. you, but if you're cool with walk cycles, leave them in. And then replace as as new stuff comes online and old stuff, or maybe stuff that's not as interesting to you fades out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think of the portfolio itself as more of a of a strategy document uh, in terms of like getting you work. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and the so you want to tailor it to the type of work you want to make. Mm -hmm. um, and then also. You know, if you apply for a job where they may want this stuff, it you know it's it's always good to just have it have it at the ready. You know, so if you're <laughs> directing if you're directing people to your website, and the job entails, uh, you know, walk cycles and 3D models and stuff, then yeah, you want to point them to a section that has that for sure. <laughs> but if you if you get to a point where you're like, no, nope, I want to design characters and I don't want to build. 3D models of trees, and I don't want to animate anything anymore, and I don't want to do, you know, 2D side scroller stuff. Then that mm -hmm. stuff—that's when that stuff comes out for good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, since I'm a student for now, and uh, I'll I'll graduate in, a, in about a year, uh, I I wouldn't mind any job that I can get at at first. <laughs> So that's why I kept everything inside my portfolio. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's, 
That's always a conundrum. Go ahead, Amy. Sorry. It it, it just depends. Like, you know, it it depends what what job you're showing your portfolio to as well. Like you can you can (laughs) tailor your portfolio Mm. to what job you're applying to. So, you know, say you you can obviously do, you know, walk cycles, you can design in 3D, you do all sorts of things. But if if the job that you were sending your portfolio to was say a game just a game design where you have to design assets and things. Mm-hmm. you know you just take out the walk cycles or and whatever's irrelevant and only send your portfolio with what would interest them mm-hmm. and to help you get that job um because I do that all the time I mean my portfolio I have mainly uh I have a few different things on there but mainly it's um painting color keys and um, just my love of color and light you know because I love color um, but also in there I've got a little, little section on character design um, mm-hmm. and props because you know for example like what Chris was saying if if they want you to fill in and you know their character designer or prop designers dropped out or is ill and you know oh Amy can do that because there's a tiny section there but it's not the main thing because it's not what I'm most interested in or the best at mm-hmm. I love yeah. this tree by the way I'm, I love trees I have a thing for trees and that's a nice tree <laughs> <laughs> speaking of trees there's often a strategy that I recommend. I refer to it as sprouts don't branch out. Sprouts don't branch out. You know, in order to grow into a tree, it has to be a sprout first, right? Well, it's a seed first, but you know, well, or is it? Um, and now we're getting existential. No, you know, the, the seed sprout, you know, what's the sapling? What's the small tree, baby tree? Growing up tree, right? This is a, uh, well, I don't even know the term. What's the term for the study of plants? Botany. That's it. Awesome. Botany class. Yeah. Um, okay. So, sprout. A sprout can't support a giant tree branch, right? It can go, you know, I live in this old neighborhood and there's all these big trees around, which I love. But if you were to attach one of these giant branches to a tiny little sprout, sprout, it would fall over, right? There's in every, at least that I know of, in every sustainably successful art career, there's a strong trunk. There's a strong trunk. There's a core uh, foundation to the to the artist's brand, and then over time it starts to become hey could you do ours do your do that thing on ours you know oh hey could you try this you know like a good example is being able to work with the disney broadway division i never in a million years thought i would be working on broadway in a in a way you know or with broadway people not on broadway but well i was on broadway with them for a bit but not dancing and singing Although I should have been, those people just cannot identify talent, you know, they missed out. Um, uh, but you know, I never thought I would in a million years. And then we're being able to go backstage and play with Julie Taymor puppets. And I mean, it was incredible. Right. But it was just because they knew I worked in animation. And so they knew I, you know, had sort of a Disney background and then, uh, they saw my plane air work and they were like, Hey, could you, come do that for our thing. And then the, the project I did with them was based in my, my plain air style. Uh, it was an illustration. So it wasn't plain air work, but it was uh, based in my plain air style. And that was an amazing project, an amazing opportunity. But, you know, if they hadn't been able to do that math, right. Okay. So you're, you know, you're bona fide, you know, at least in the Disney idiom or paradigm, right. You're bona fide in that way. Um, but then you also have this other work and you, you know, so you're, in other words, you're, you're sort of part of the Disney family, but you also do this other thing. So you have this other thing that we, that matches our project. And so I think, yeah, that's what can start happening. I'm not saying don't post a variety of work or styles. I mean, I look at my Instagram, you know, it's like, it's just lots of different stuff. So I'm not, I'm not suggesting that one can't have a successful career that way. But I am saying that repeat work comes from people being able to think, all right, we need somebody who's a really good color art director. Oh, is Amy Lewis available? 
you know, they have to be able to do that. We need somebody who can design this theme park attraction and it's not going to collapse on the people that are trying to use it. You know, hey, is Chris Bradley around? You know, see available, you know, that's what happens, right? You, you start to make this association. And so I think the pressure is higher on people trying to break in because you're trying to simplify that and increase. It's like min maxing in games, you know, you're trying to simplify uh, the ability of other people to think of you, you know? <laughs> and yeah. so um over time, and I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying don't ever post a variety of things. I think over time, as people start to associate you with something you've done on another project, it becomes less about how you're marketing, you know, making finger quotes uh, and branding yourself in that way. But I think during that break-in phase, it's especially challenging. And maybe even I go as far as to say problematic. I mean, it really is. It's, it's a tangled kind of mess of difficulty and a unique kind of difficulty. But there's a difference in becoming, and when you're starting out your careers, you, I mean, you're not a sprout, you're a very accomplished artist, not strong, but you know, your career, as you've just said, is in its nascent stages. And then your career is going to grow into that, you know, tree. But I think there will always still be this tree trunk that holds the whole thing up, even if it has all these different branches, you know, the trunk is still strong enough to hold it, you know, it's like, I can't, I cannot have a career as an illustrator for Broadway companies. That's never, you know what I mean? It's like, there was like one job for that, you know, and maybe a few others every now and then, like who designed the wicked poster? You know, I mean, it's one of the best posters ever made, you know? So th those things come along occasionally, but there's not like an industry of Broadway illustrators, you know, that's not going to happen. So uh, I can't depend on that to be my, the trunk of my career tree. Does that make any sense? You know, I also want to hear from Veronica too. I'm talking a lot here and I want to get out of the way. Yeah, that made sense to me, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that. made sense to me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But yeah, I just, I was so struck with the strength of your story in the game stuff, Nastron, that when you mentioned that you want to do biz dev and, you know, I look at your illustration section of your portfolio and your game section. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking like, if you took those strengths of like, you know, that charming little, like a little old man going throughout out his day or like, you know, the B game where it's like, you know, these small creatures and like what they do and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think those, like, you're, you're so sensitive to those little nuanced, cool things about like characters and environments and like the story that's implicit in these everyday things. And so that's already a strength. So I just can't wait to see what you'll do when you do, you know, like biz dev work, but bring all of that to it. And I think that that's really going to unlock something in your portfolio where like, take those things that you're already so, you know, naturally drawn to and naturally doing, and then just transfer them and make the work for that portfolio for that job that you want. And I think it's just yeah. going to be like, I mean, I can't promise anything, but I feel like it would be instant success because it's like the charm is there. The beauty is there. Like you have some really nice color choices. And I think just getting that storytelling into the work that you want to do rather than having it all in the work that you're kind of still interested in, but it's not the main trunk of the tree. Um, I think that will be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, that makes sense a lot. Um, a lot of the works, uh, a lot of the things that I posted in my portfolio are um, my, were my assignments for school. And, uh -huh. uh, the problem was um, uh, I only had eight weeks for, for example, the game project yeah. <laughs> for all the animations, the concept art, everything. <laughs> That's so, a lot. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, yeah, even I always... in those eight weeks, you did such an amazing job. So mm -hmm, I feel like yeah. given like mm -hmm. a greater span of time, like I just get chills thinking about what you can accomplish. <laughs> no, thank you so much. That makes me feel really good. <laughs> And, you know, that was something too. Oh, what was I about to say? It was something about story and the game stuff. Um, gosh, if it comes back to me, I'll say, but, but basically okay. like, 
it's it's just such amazing work that's done I think just getting that focus getting that like you know what do I want to do with the time that is given to me on this earth uh and Mm -hmm. putting that in I I think that's going to make a big difference Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you so much and granted when you're in school it's like well you got to do your homework you know it's like yeah obviously you have to do the assignments that's not Mm -hmm. that's not part of it you know but in the conversations we've had in in class and the conversation we're having now and hearing you interact with the mentors, I wonder if, yeah, I just wonder, I just wonder if there's this sense where you've kind of found your inner Beyonce, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a very interesting question. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of insecurities in art. Like I, just being not being the worst artist in the room makes me already feel better. <laughs> yeah, well, so. I mean, that's true for all of us, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody's on that page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I th- I think you're amazing, and I think your 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 skill, your skill and your ability to uh, acquire skills is remarkable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you can do anything. Thank you so much. Let's uh, let's take a very very short break here. I'm going to play a, a a very short video to share with everybody some of the first impressions. Thank you, uh, Mari, especially for going and and collecting the um, collecting the videos there. I'm going to try. You know, this is always a um, this is always an adventure here. Everybody trying to uh, trying to share video over zoom but i'm gonna i'm gonna try it's only i think 48 seconds long or something like that is that long enough to go to the bathroom yes uh, absolutely absolutely long no no i mean yeah feel free to uh mentors to uh to get a take a moment there um but yeah i'll just play the. i'll attempt to play this for us and i'll see how uh i'll see how it goes here Oh, good. Yep. Thanks to Seth Ernest for that amazing soundtrack. You know, I said, Seth, we're bringing Magic Box back and we got to have something that I said, we need to channel Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind and Fire, but also have it have a little bit of spookiness, just a subtle spookiness to kind of suggest the Magic Box, you know, this this uh, artifact that we you know, oh, do we open it? Do we not? Yeah, I was like, we need that vibe. And then this is what he comes back with. I was like, oh my God, you nailed it. it was amazing. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, Seth Ernest, everyone. I think it's time for Andrea. Am I right? Fantastic. Woo-hoo! Fantastic. Um, team, if we could update the chat with the links i don't know if you maybe you've done that just recently and then, then there's no no need to worry about that but we can um you can download the agenda via pdf you can enroll in the course at magicboxacademy.com you can download the syllabus view the faq and of course if you have any questions after all that you can always email us and by us i mean usually it's mari sometimes it's me at support at chrisoatley.com. One of these days we'll have a support at magicboxacademy.com. But uh, right now it's all linked up to this email. Support at chrisoatley.com. And uh, yeah, now we're going to have uh, kind of 
it's it's like it's, it's in the same vein as the portfolio reviews, but it's more of a case study, more of a deep dive. And Andrea is here, and Andrea is having a moment. Andrea is having a moment in the development of her work. And uh, I mean, I think all of us in class have just been amazed just seeing, you know, uh, the kind of leaps and bounds, I guess, um, to uh, that, that you, your work has been taking recently. Well, and so we have some you. samples and we're going to dig into your, uh, yeah, into your process a little bit. Awesome. The, Let's go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Andrea's ready. Let's ready, go. Ready. So am I. Um, this name, Ma the Magic Box Prestige Portfolios, you know, that's the name of the course. And this term prestige is a play on words because, you know, I don't apologize for dad jokes. Never have, never will. Uh, that's not true. I have a lot, actually. Um, <laughs> but maybe I need to stop apologizing for the dad jokes. Uh, what am I saying? Prestige. So, you know, it's the reference to the Christopher Nolan movie about ma magicians and magic boxes, right? The, pre the prestige. And uh, in that movie, I mean, it's also like prestige, you know, literally, we would all love to have our, the, you know, our por portfolios thought of as prestigious, right? But, um, but about the movie, you know, in the movie, Michael Caine has that great speech that's on the trailers and, you know, all that. And uh, he talks about how, you know, there are these three parts to any great magic trick. And the last part is the prestige. And there's the pledge and the turn of the, the first and second act of it. But the prestige is the moment that really, you know, everyone's mind is blown and they go, wow, you know, or they applaud and cheer. You know, it's, it's the, the wow moment. But what the movie shows, and this is the most vague spoiler ever, I suppose it could count as a spoiler but the the movie kind of shows that the prestige moment the wow is very costly now this example breaks down because none of us want to end up like christian bale or anybody else in the movie they make bad decisions it's a christopher nolan film those you know <laughs> that's the cautionary aspect of getting the balance wrong uh but just purely as a metaphor for the idea of the wow moment doesn't it's a metaphor for how the wow moment does not happen in the wow moment they don't occur simultaneously the wow moment is a product of often meticulous always thorough preparation and practice leading up to that wow moment it's this idea of uh the montage problem right the movie montage problem you know we all expect you know that artistic development or career success of this kind of thing is going to come like it did for Rocky. You know, and, and then five minutes later, after a montage of time passing and him in the meat locker punching <laughs> beef and things like that are, you know, then all of a sudden it's like, feeling strong now. you know, we're going to come out and, and win. When it's like that's months and months and months or maybe years, I don't know how long does that, you know, montage represent, but you know, it's preparation and practice. It's preparation and practice. And uh, I just mixed up Christopher Nolan's The Prestige with Rocky. And I feel like somebody needs to do some fan art right now, uh, some sort of combination there. <laughs> anyway. My point is, we think it's a movie montage. You know, we, we often think it is, and it's just not. But just for some reason, people don't want to talk about that. You know, they don't, want to talk, they don't want to talk about the ugly struggle in between. You know, they just only want the wow moment. And this is not a new problem. This has been a problem for a long time with humans. It's just that now we have a thing called social media that, that enables it in a way that's unprecedented. And so it's, you know, it's just a big widespread problem now. And, you know, now we get to start when we're three years old and on and on. So we have an issue with that, but uh, that's, uh, that's a different topic. My point is that the wow moment, the prestige moment is earned. It's earned. 
It's earned through preparation. I can sit here and tell you that. And it's like, okay, great. Awesome. What does that even mean? Well, it means different things depending on the artist. And one of those key components I've learned over, you know, almost two decades of teaching formally and more than that, teaching kind of in, in informal capacities is that a, a big part of that is compensating for our weaknesses. <laughs> Did he just say the W word? You know, right? Compensating for our weaknesses. And everybody has different ones. And it's not a thing we need to be worried about or ashamed of or, um, you know, because to have strengths is to also have weaknesses, right? And so process is a lot about what do you hate or suck at? Then you come up with process to compensate for those things. And then you, and then the work is better. You know what I mean? And so for me, I am not, and I never want to be as good as Stan Prokopenko is at drawing the figure. You know, Stan is amazing at drawing the figure. Amazing. And also great at teaching drawing the figure. Uh, exemplary teacher in that regard. Um, but I just, that's not the life I want. I don't care. <laughs> I like drawing. I do enjoy drawing, but I, not that much. If, if Stan is the definition of enjoying drawing, then I hate it. <laughs> you know, like by comparison, I don't want to be that good at figure drawing. It's never going to happen. I can just tell you right now, it's never going to happen. I'm not going to invest as much time as required to be as good as Stan is at drawing the figure. But Stan did, right? Stan did because he loves it. He obviously loves it. He's passionate about teaching. He's passionate about drawing the figure. He's passionate about drawing in general. So he found the right fit. I, in my process, when it comes to drawing a human or humanoid figure, need to lean on reference a lot more than Stan does or she and Kim or some, you know, Lois or whoever, you know, like these people who could just draw the figure like a champ. Like, well, I, I need more reference. My art doesn't have to suck. You know, I just need more reference. I just need more reference in that regard. So there's a, a term or a quote rather that has kind of become a mantra around here. And that is from Jen Ely, my former student, my friend, my collaborator, past collaborator on several occasions. She's taught uh, with us before. Uh, and she was just recently the color. I, I keep meaning to look up what her official title was, but she did the color for uh, Pinocchio the del toro pinocchio she said on my one of my podcasts one of my past podcasts she said uh strive for good and fast will happen strive for good and fast will happen and so process is striving for good artists get often get so impatient with process you know they just want it but i gotta get i gotta post the algorithm gods need my sacrifice you know um, you know, they demand it. And I got to post, got to post, got to post, got to post, got to get it fast. And that's what happens. We get into that whole thing. When it's like, um, how often, you know, do we uh, associate fast with quality? Certainly not with burgers. Or pizza. I'm hungry. <laughs> you know? We don't usually buildings, right? We don't, we don't usually associate fast with quality. It's, it's a counterintuitive thing. And yet artists are just so, you know, we just get so in a rush. So anyway, let's get to Andrea's work. My point is, is that you're good, what you're going to see is going to feel like, wow, it's a lot of work. Yeah, but look at the final result. You will get faster over time. You will memorize things. You will be able to memorize aspects of the figure, you know, I can I can still get myself out of trouble, you know, if I'm in, a, if I get into trouble on a composition, and I have to draw on I have enough anatomy knowledge to be able to solve a problem. You know, you will, you will develop, you know, you will get faster. But right now, if you're trying to break in, focus on good. Focus on good. Don't worry about fast. Okay. Andrea. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being willing to, you know, kind of take us behind the scenes here. Of course. My Andrea pleasure. Assembled. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. 
It's okay. What were you saying there? Oh, I just said my pleasure. Oh, oh just... okay. Um, you can find Andre's portfolio at artstation.com forward slash schwampy. Yes. Schwampy. Beautiful pronounced in English. I love it. Wonderful. <laughs> I love it. Um, and so you can go there, but I'm going to show specifically, we're, we're going to show some work in progress because like I said, you're having a moment right now. A good one. I just want to emphasize that it's a good moment. Um, I, yeah, I agree. I think everybody agrees. I mean, it's, it's just been fantastic. So you are currently at the line art stage of two illustrations that you're doing. Correct. And uh, maybe, I, you know what, I'll, I'll skip down. And I'll show the line art of the other one also. So here, this is a piece based on Little Shop of Horrors. And then here's a piece that's sort of a knives out kind of cozy mystery kind of uh, prompt. And then we'll, uh, you know, we obviously won't go through every single um, detail of the process. I'd like to talk more specifically about, you know, or I mean, I'd like to talk more in general about the um, way that your process has changed in doing these two pieces. What about it, you know, in essence is different than it used to be. In and both just... or comparing both of them to each other or. Oh, and other. I mean, yes, I'm, you're right. I'm making an assumption here. <laughs> I'm making an assumption that that, that the answer to that is the same for both illustrations. Um, yeah. And that's not necessarily <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, however you want to interpret that question, I'll follow your lead on that. Well, I think it's important to mention the overall difference of these mm. two specific projects compared to previous work, because it was these two projects that completely changed how I approached um, art projects and how I think about approaching a project and how that process um, has changed and developed and just gets now a little bit adjusted. And so the first and foremost, I think that I have to mention is your analogy about magic box just fits so perfectly with this whole endeavor of changing my process because it's like, I feel like I've gazed behind the curtain and I've hmm. seen how the magicians are doing it. And now I'm like, well, I can do that. You ain't specialer than me. I'm <laughs> sorry. I can do that too. So yeah, it definitely starts with being disillusioned about that. This is some kind of a magic process that it's just about taking a pencil in your hand and drawing it out. And it's going to be fantastic. Right. That's completely not true, right? And so when uh, the first thing that I did that I thought was like the biggest influence on the process was analyzing the greats, the great mm -hmm. illustrators, the great masters, trying to understand how they approach their projects and figuring out how I could use that knowledge with my own way of thinking and approaching and analyzing and doing. So like we see here, there are some studies on the left, mm -hmm. all of the great illustrators who are just amazing. And I just did this for about a week <laughs> of just yeah. looking at beautiful illustrations, trying to figure out the composition, the line work, the pain, the color, their choices, just asking questions. Why, 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 why? Mm. And all of those answered answers influenced how I perceived my steps for my process. Mm. So it no longer became this like vague kind of ethereal moment. It now became more like sit down, figure out what you need to do, figure out how to approach those aspects of a project and figure out what is the best way to get the best result and where, where are you lacking within those tasks? So figuring out lines, figuring out shape, figuring out characters, colors, uh, composition, and all that stuff. And that was a lot of work that I did not expect. That's great. Breaking it down I, into every yeah. single piece, right? As you have here, like you've got your protagonist, you've got the antagonist, you've got, uh, you know, one is a human that you're basing more on Rick Moranis, the actor in the movie, whereas the yeah. other one is, you know... Uh, I mean, it's not a cartoon, but it is a very cartoony kind of design, very Henson-y design. 
uh, then color, obviously, and then you're you're working on value and color right now. And so here you are exploring form. Here's straight up studies from the movie. Yeah, you're just breaking down mm-hmm. every single piece and going, do I really know how to draw that? Yeah. <laughs> like, do yeah. I really know? Do I really understand it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. When When you're just by yourself doing a project, I suppose I would say the best thing is just being honest with yourself. Yeah. And accepting, hey, this is not where I'm strong. Let's let's try to figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a long process. It's a hard process, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. I have to say, Andrea gave us two different thank you cards for the end of the slideshow. Yeah. I had to use them both, Andre, because I couldn't pick. So we got a thank you for both <laughs> illustrations. <laughs> They're so entertaining. I just can't even. I saw this and laughed out loud at whatever it was, 7.30 this morning. It just, oh, it's just so good. Oh, yeah. That's it. that's exactly how I was feeling afterwards. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is, uh, right? And I, I guess that's yeah. where the Rocky thing is actually a better metaphor than... Um, for the prestige, because in the prestige, people ruin their own lives and ruin the lives of other people. But in Rocky, you know, he um, he gains a lot. And uh, and so I guess that's, a you know, maybe a more apt metaphor. It's still hard work. It's still difficult. But you just gain so much. You know, you gain this ability to communicate. You gain the wow factor from, you know, at the audience who up until now has been, you know, your fellow classmates. But you know, that's obviously going to expand as you start to go more public with this work. And yeah, you know, mm-hmm. anyway, um, let's talk about uh, the reveal. So this was a prompt. It was a uh, cozy murder mystery. So lots of characters stuck in one room. Uh, it took me a bit to realize that cozy murder mystery was actually a genre and not what I first thought. Right. That was my so mistake. That, <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Uh, so after actually understanding and figuring out the breathe, the first thing that I had to do was figure out the heart, mm. what I wanted to say, what this image is supposed to say. So figuring out where the story is and how that story could be best represented within an illustration. So we went through a lot of thumbnails. We trashed a lot of thumbnails, but mm-hmm. that's just part of the process. That's mm-hmm. okay. It didn't hurt me one bit. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, little bits of my soul might have died, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything for art. And when we kind of figured out what the actual um, concept will be, then it became much simpler. And then once again, the process was quite similar to Feed Me illustration. But this time it was faster. And that's why Mm -hmm. I mentioned the difference between Uh are we talking about both or are we talking about everything else? The process was so much faster because now I had a clearer understanding of what I was doing and how to laser focus on all the details that I needed to laser focus on, figure out what I needed before I started um, drawing the illustration or the thumbnail. We have a lot of photo shoots, you know, a lot of my husband, God bless him. (laughs) I mean, he did say I do, but I'm not really sure this is what he had in mind. (laughs) I mean, he's fantastic. It's so, he's so good. What an, I mean, he's just got a natural kind of, you know, performance. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Although now I do realize I do need a budget for costuming, but that's a completely different story. Maybe next time. It's real fun. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. And then I designed the characters and this time around, because they were more humanoid, more actual um, humans than characters, than cartoons. And yeah, right. I decided to go with a more uh, living example approach, found actors or celebrities that I thought were kind of similar to what I was hoping for. Use myself a little bit here. <laughs> You know, because sometimes just can't come up with anything. So you're like, okay, well, selfie time. Let's go. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I learned I would look great in pinup, so that's fantastic. And yeah, and after that, it was all right. Let's translate all of this work and all mm-hmm. of this prep, and let's put it into the thumbnail. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Yeah, I was listening to, uh, I love this, and then with the magnifying glass, it was so good. Uh, I was listening to an interview this morning uh, with, um, I was nervous about today, about this event, and so I, I tried to do something to distract myself in the waiting time. And uh, I was listening to an interview with Tim Robinson, who is the kind of main person behind the Netflix sketch comedy show, I Think You Should Leave. And the interview was about kind of why is I Think You Should Leave better than Saturday Night Live and other, you know, kinds of things that he that, that project projects that he's been associated with. And he was very, you know, diplomatic about it, but that was kind of the the subtext of the conversation. And uh, one of the things he said was that he thinks that it makes the work good on his show on Netflix is that they throw so much of it away. They throw so much of yeah. it away. He said, um, you know, we have sketches that are whatever, a couple minutes. And there was like six other minutes of funny jokes, but we just kept trimming and trimming, just realizing that that's actually the best version of the, of the sketch. And uh, he's like, it's not like we were just trimming stuff that's, that we just knew wasn't very good. We were trimming stuff that we knew was good. Now I'm just paraphrasing, but that's essentially what he was saying. And uh, that there was really good stuff that they cut to make the piece better. And I think that's the thing. It's so easy to get, you know, married to a thumbnail, mm -hmm. you know, or married to a particular study when the angle doesn't work, when you finally get it working in the overall composition or something like that, you know, yeah. That is what process is. We have, you know, it process is asking questions. You know, I, Victoria Ying said that one time I was interviewing her for, for a course. She came in and did a guest uh, teaching spot in one of her courses. And, and she said, visual development is asking questions. And I was like, oh, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good. You know, yeah, and she was um, right. Yeah, she's absolutely right. And, and so, yeah, you know, you're asking questions. Well, sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes it's not going to work in that composition, or sometimes it's not going to work for that character. So, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. Right. So sometimes it's not going to work within the context that you intend it. Now you can still write Melquia the not for now folder. We love the not for now folder. It's like you just, yeah, you, know, you don't, if, if no is hard to deal with, well, then it's not no, it's just not for now. You know, just use this in a different illustration. You know, this is why I draw Tin Man and Midsummer Night's Dream and um animal farm all the time because i just keep coming up with ideas for those stories like why change you know it's personal personal work i just want to you know explore those worlds so yeah again artstation.com forward slash schwampy perfect schwampy. like yes. sean connery schwampy. yes yes <laughs> uh, thank you andrea for for sharing that and you know yeah go find andrea on instagram and and you can geek out about process. Of course. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. We uh, we are now at the midpoint, and we are tw well, only 20 minutes behind schedule. Wow. Okay. That's, I mean, folks, this is, this is good. This is, th we're doing good by comparison. I'm surprised. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, okay. So portfolio reviews uh, resume now. I do want to uh, add another reminder here. You can enroll in magicboxacademy.com. And then we have three more portfolios. We have uh, illustration, specifically with kid lit, character design, and environment art uh, with kind of a games VR focus. And so we'll do those now. Melquia. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> I'm doing good. Good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for, for uh, being here. Thanks. It's been great crawling out of my hole of working. <laughs> Uh, you've been working hard lately. Yeah, you've, I mean, you're, well, and then you had a big moment this week. Yeah. Vis-a-vis -vis career. Yeah. What was that moment? W the book on the shelf? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Which one of the many? Yeah. Which one of the many great mo moments? <laughs> it's been wild. Um, well, tell us about that, though. Yeah. So... One of the fun things that uh, I love about my mentorship with Chris and with everybody here is that um, when I first started, <laughs> before pre getting into OA, I was doing all of the things. I had a YouTube, an Instagram, a Facebook, a Facebook, 
I had an email list. I was trying to do all of the things I was wanting to be in like concept art and maybe video games and a little bit of illustration and animation too. I wanted all of it. And I also was the type of student who was a person that was like, I want a double major in animation, illustration, and minor in theater. And <laughs> was just, you got <laughs> all of the things. And that's just been the story of my life. And then Chris told me to focus and my brain broke. <laughs> <laughs> he said the F word. <laughs> and it really, once I started having that precise, mm. every decision that I made, it I knew like, it was either animation or picture books. And it, I had to make a decision. And it was terrifying to make that decision because I felt like if I had to choose one, then use the other, it just would never happen. And so I chose, I saw a picture that really resonated with me that I made prior. And I said, picture books it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then once I made that decision and I tailored my portfolio to that, that's when I broke in. And that's not immediate at all. It wasn't immediate, but it, I would say June of, what was it 2020? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, give, or, give or take. That was like, I would consider that my break in moment. Mm -hmm. I worked on an actual, when I worked on picture books, when I actually had my first job being a picture book illustrator. And uh, ever since then, and each big milestone, I take a moment and reflect and say, okay, what's working, what's not working, and adjust and, you know, tweak and pivot. And in my next mentorship, uh, my next mentorship drop in will be that of, mm -hmm. okay, where have I, here's where I've been. And here's our things that I want to change. Here's my yeah. list. Of hell no's that I don't want to do anymore. Or here's mm -hmm. my list of hell yeses. I absolutely love this stuff and I want to mm -hmm. continue doing this. And so that's one of the things that I really value about my mentorships with Chris and, and honestly, the arrest, everybody else who is also being mentored by Chris as well. It's just the, there's just a lot of questioning, but pivoting and just, just really tailoring it to what is it that you want to do? Because your career really is, it, you're in the driver's seat. Um, it's not someone that just says, I'm going to hire you for the thing. It's like, no, no, no. I am the person that does the thing. Mm. You will hire me for that thing. <laughs> yeah. We, we only get to do this once. Yeah. You know, and it's not like it is, you know, it's not like we just conjure it, you know, even though we do call it the magic box. Um, <laughs> oh, no apologies for dad jokes. Um, we, uh, we do, we do, um, we don't, we don't just conjure it, but, um, but you do have a choice, you know? You do have it. Every blank page is a choice, right? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that. That's I'm all fired up. Uh, let me get out of the way here and bring up um, your uh, link. I, I just saw it uh, fly by there. Pretty kitty paintings.com, right? Yeah. <laughs> let me uh, do it this way. There we go. All right, Veronica, would you uh, would you be up for taking the lead on this? Heck yes. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica's a big fan. I, oh, Melquia, I am like your biggest fan. Like you're, I was just saying to Chris when he emailed over the portfolios, I'm like, goodness gracious, I could yeah. look at your characters all day, every day. Like they are so charming and so full of life. Mm -hmm. which is so difficult to do in a drawing. Like, you know, every character designer, every illustrator ever is like, how do I put life into my characters? And I feel like you've just got, you know, it's this combo of like a natural affinity for like, you know, you're, you have such a charming personality. You're so friendly. And I think that that your just natural ability to mm. like see people and see who they are as people rather than just, you know, oh, it's a person who cares. Um it comes through in the work and then pair that with, you know, all the skill you've been building, all the hard work you've been putting in. And I think it's just really apparent in this portfolio that like, oh man, so good. <laughs> yeah. It's just breathtaking. I, I, I gotta say, uh, Veronica, you know, um, I imagine your 
uh, color temperature um, sort of radar was going off as well there. I know oh, Malquia yeah. as well, Malquia <laughs> did the painting, but you know, just seeing all these gorgeous temperature shifts. I mean, you're just having a blast there, Melquia. Just you're just you're just having such great playtime with all the color uh, temperature shifts. It's so fun. It's also fun doing it in skin. I, I picked mm-hmm. that actually for with a yeah. I can't remember what class it was. It was like a drawing two class that I took when mm-hmm. I got my associates. And um my my professor was like, add more color into the skin because it just adds more interest. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? And it just <laughs> <laughs> I picked that up and I kept it. I was like, yeah, I'm adding. Like, even if there's like, he's like, find a blue. Like, if you can see it, like, find a blue, find a purple. And just a little, like a little kiss right on the cheek. Why not? Mm. Like, near it, a little bit of that and just play it up. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, totally. That that really does, that really adds like fun to uh, to different surfaces and adding that to the texture. I think so. And I think that's part of what gives it that feeling of life is like, you're, not only, you know, the designs are supporting that, but also the color choices you're making where it's like, oh my gosh, and this one's just so fun. Uh, But yeah, all all your color choices, all the designs, it's just so great. And that was actually something I was going to mention is with the brush strokes and with the multicolor kind of accents on stuff. I just, you know, I dig it, but I was thinking something that could really like, you know, make that even stronger would be really thinking about the form and where you're placing those brush strokes. So like, you know, this is a good example where like, if we're looking at the elbow of this character, like with where she's holding the comb, that little blue spot on the corner of her elbow, it's so nice. And I think it would be even nicer if like, it was just a hair's breadth, you know, like curve just a little so that you're getting that turn of the form or that anatomy a little bit. So it's like, Mm you're not really spelling out the anatomy because that's not the style you're going for is like super real, but just getting everything to work in concert with each other and to really like, you know, nail those points where, or like, you know, in any of the characters faces where you have those cool little patches. Well, what would happen if we put that patch of color on say, you know, like the cheek that's receding from us or, you know, a turn of the nose or, you know, different things like that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just describe the form a little more. Mm-hmm. Building upon what Veronica was saying, what is the like number one technical aspect of making art that you love the most? I really like painting, if that makes sense, in terms of the technicality. It does. Um, I am very much a painter more than a drawer. Um, but, uh, realizing in Kidlet that painting, it's a little, t- and when I was thinking about like, how did I want to execute my style? I realized that painting, it's a little tougher to make sure that the characters stay consistent throughout the 32, 48 pages, um, consistently. And so mm-hmm. that's where I added inking and line art and trying to play those two together so that's something that I've been figuring out too is just like while I'm working on these projects right so I think I think on your on your journey I would I would take what that little piece of advice that that resonated so strongly with you about you know adding more colors to it you know just Mm -hmm. finding a little bit more color in there and master it Mm -hmm. like like push 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 real hard on that like like i I love this piece i think this this is great and i i i i totally agree with exactly what veronica called out on this my suggestion would be um maybe find find reference of you know let's say characters with black skin under colored light and and do studies and just master that like have that down pat so that you you don't ever while you're making this stuff you're you're not questioning or anything like that you're you know it you just know it and 
if you just took one technical aspect and cranked it up as high as you could get it, uh, I mean, you're a you're a rocket ship. You're you're gonna like it. It's gonna take off, and and it, it, you know you'll be unstoppable in a in a heartbeat. I just think that it's like that. You know, look at what Andrea did and the and the amount of work that she put in in just in the in the development, the you know the stuff before making the image, and echo that. And I think I I just think like. There is no there is no limit to what what you can do with your skills after that. I I really think one solid push in that direction and you're you're yeah, it's gonna be amazing to watch. Yeah, I'll just chime in there real quick just to follow up on what Riley was saying. Um yeah, I think Melquia, you're such an entertainer. Like you obviously love uh you love telling stories and you love entertaining, you know, the audience of, uh, that are reading your books and enjoying your illustration. Um, and so I think that that is something that is happening because you love painting so much, just the mere act of painting so much. That's also coming across. Ooh, I could do this. I could do this. I think that Monet did that. And I think that would be something really worth exploring Monet Degas even though I'm not that big of a Renoir fan, you know, still worth uh, <laughs> studying, I think. Um, Surratt, that, that sort of optical blending, yeah, I think you can get more of that optical blending of color in there. Um, you know, taking this thing that you're already in love with, that you already do well, and just l try to sort of absorb the superpowers of these other painters, um, in order to bring it into what you do so that you could just dazzle the crowd even more. You know, I think it really is showing off, you know, it's really going like, how do I really show off what I can do with color? Cause like, that's what Monet was doing, right? How do I just show off what I can do with color? And I, and, and there is a technical aspect to that because of the way the paint was applied and the sort of, you know, it's not only about color choices, right? It's about color juxtaposition. So, you're already doing this like interplay of the brush strokes and everything. Your paintings have really great surface activity. So I think that that's kind of already happening. You could just bring into that even more variety of hue, saturation, temperature, et cetera. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I think a little bit of like mental pushback is like, okay, but how do I do that in 32 pages? <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. It's easy to say, you know, when you don't, you're not on a deadline, right? I mean, right. that's yeah. All day long, we can talk about what would be cool, you know, it's yeah. like, but I think part of it is, and I can't remember if we talked about this Melquia, but that's where I always say like, you know, um, my mom, we, there was a Thanksgiving dinner one time we were having Thanksgiving when I was a kid and my mom, uh, tried to cook something brand new that she'd never cooked before for Thanksgiving dinner and the, the all, whole family's coming over and maybe some friends, I don't quite remember, but there were a lot of people coming over for dinner and my mom cooked a new thing and she got really stressed out. And I think I'll have to ask her, but I think that was the last time she ever prepared something new when she was on a deadline, you know? And so I think that's also part of it is like, you're right when you're on a deadline, well, maybe that's not the time for experimenting or if you, or if you do experiment, we just like, it's a very narrow experiment. You just don't like, you don't try to do anything too bonkers or, un or unprecedented. But when you're like with Andrea's pieces, when you're doing these personal projects and you're not on a deadline, I think that's where you can go and train your arm a little bit more to pick, you know, to like kind of make the right kind of strokes that you want to be making, or, you know, you can start pushing the palettes more. And if the thing becomes a total disaster, well, no problem. You just throw it away you know, or, or, or delete the color layer in layer or layers and, uh, you know, just go back to line art and start over, you know? So I think it's kind of parsing those things. That makes a lot of sense. The, the unfortunate thing is that you don't, you don't do it in the 32 pages. You yeah. just, you just don't, you have to do yeah. it in the, in the thousand pages that are also happening in the background, <laughs> right? <laughs> Unfortunately, 
I, I, I am an advocate for, for low risk practice. So, you know, doing stuff like master studies and, uh, and, and sort of, you know, drawings from photos and whatnot, anything that, that you can sit down and there isn't a huge mental block to it. It's, you're going to set a timer for 45 minutes, half an hour, whatever time you've got, and just do a little studying and, and then use that as like a warm up before you jump into the day's work. Um, you'll find that cumulatively that adds up. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, even if it's not directed, like, oh, I have to draw hands today, I'm going to study hands. Even if it's not that literally connected, it does, you know, you are what you eat, right? And so you are ingesting great stuff that way. And then it does eventually just sort of come out um, in, in the work that you are on a deadline for, for sure. Mm -hmm. Synthesis, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to wrap up soon, but I definitely still want to go to Amy before we, we yeah. close out here. But we've got two more portfolios. Yeah, okay, no problem. Um, yeah, I mean, all I can say, because Chris, Chris covered the, the point I wanted to say was, was about the, um, you've got lovely shifts in, in hue and colour there, but you can definitely, I think you could definitely play with that more. Because I mm. this, in this illustration in particular, I can just see in my mind's eye some really, really lovely, rich, sort of more on the burnt sienna, sort of deep brown sort of size in that shadow area. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, you know, rather than just um, desaturated dark, you know, more, use more colour um, in the dark areas. And, and that bit, yeah, it's um, that'd be amazing. And also that snowy scene that you've got. I um, I mean, I think your characters are absolutely lovely. Um, but I think, I do think that you can really push the colours to go away from desaturated sort of grey shadow to more rich richer color in the shadow but still dark um because i think that really yeah yeah i think that would really bring out the um the character and the fun that you've got already in your pieces mm -hmm. yeah more of those passive colors mm -hmm. Melquia, instead of neutrals going more into the passive i mean still using neutrals but yeah. you know yeah well and here's the thing amy i mean it's happening right here Mm -hmm. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have this turn. We have the yellow going into the the more local color white there into the cyan, the pale cyan into the lavender, and then with the bounce light there. So, you know, it's like you're already doing it in in I mean, like all over the snowman here, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just taking that same principle and applying it yeah. to the characters. I think I'm not trying to put words in your mouth there, Amy. No, I say to... exactly what I was getting at. Um, but I mean, it's, it's all your drawings are so full of life. And mm -hmm. I just think that, yeah, this extra little bit of color finesse would be next level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the Beautiful. cat <laughs> in the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just tremendously charming. Just yeah. tremendously charming. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And as always, we'll link to um, Melquia's social and website in the chat and description when we post the video. Okay, Katie's here. Katie. Yes, I am. You. Hi. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us while you're traveling. So you're <laughs> my a, pleasure. You're a, you're in nomad mode right now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so thank you for, uh, for joining us. Katie is I'm saying that because uh, it, you know, it might not be 100% ideal audio situation or whatever and if that's the case we're just gonna power through yeah whatever we can do um i saw a couple of questions coming in there and thank you tim, team for pinging me i will uh we'll we'll do katie's review here and then we'll um we'll take just a moment and i'll answer a couple of those questions that you wanted to highlight and then uh, and then we'll wrap up with with carmen uh, but i'm gonna get out of the way immediately here katie just in the interest of time and sure. bring it up in your portfolio is on a PDF. So I've got it yes. here on the hard drive, everybody. Ready to go. And then, um, yeah, oh, I just said I was going to get out of the way. And yet I was supposed to take the lead on this <laughs> one because it's character design. <laughs> so I guess, uh, I guess I'll do that. Um, you and I have talked about this. Katie, of course, you know, in class and and so some of this, you know, please forgive mm -hmm. me for just repeating 
myself here, but you know, it's for the benefit of those that that haven't been privy to those conversations. I think something that so this was earlier work. Well, not this. This was not super early by comparison, but you know, it was this these characters, this project that you had prior to coming into my mentorship, and um, you know, I saw this and and I thought, I mean, I love it, and you're still working on it. But one mm -hmm. of the things that was happening with a lot of your character expressions and, and that kind of thing, I was going, um, you, I think there's a wacky, I think there's a wackiness <laughs> in there, a sense of humor, you know, sort of an off the wall kind of thing going on in your uh, imagination. And um, we talked Guilty. about that <laughs> and, and and you were kind of like, I mean, it just seemed like you were like, oh yeah, like I want to try something weird, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then I threw this at you and said, well, let's just kick the tires a little bit. Let's just see, you know, what happens if you just try to go into just weirdsville and, mm -hmm. um, and we'll kind of try to, I was about to use the word established, but it's not really about establishing a spectrum, but it's, um, it's uh it just we're just trying to get our heads around what is sort of like the spectrum of humor in your work what is that spectrum and uh and then you came up with this amazing pitch that then it's like well now you got to make it a full pitch because it's so good and it's yeah. such a good premise <laughs> well dang it you know uh, uh, uh you know it's it's just so fantastic but um i'll let you you know explain that uh but i i think that um seeing that and seeing you respond to, you know, really trying to, um, yeah, to try something really off the wall makes me go in again, you've, you heard this just recently, but okay, well, yeah, but even further, push it even further. You know, we talked, for example, mm. about Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends and how far those designs are just, I mean, they're just so imaginative and such a, and this is something I was, I was recording this week, the character design lessons um for magic box prestige portfolios and as i was recording it your portfolio came to mind and i thought of that about how you know there's this term that i was using in the recording which is uh dynamic shape contrast right a contrast of shapes we often think of contrast as being value contrast how dark and light you know what are the extremes of dark and light in an image but there's right. also shape contrast and foster's home is a great example of shape contrasts within an individual character design and also yeah, shape totally. contrasts from character to character. You know, you take, you know, the blue character, right? And then compare that to any of the other characters and, and you have a, a radical variety of uh, mm -hmm. a radical kind of dynamism in the shape contrast. And so I think that's where to go next, right? Is uh, another way I describe it is, is push it until it breaks, right? Which doesn't, that yes. doesn't apply so well here with the Dust Mites project because we don't know what those look like. But if you're designing right. something like, you know, I have a demo in, um, I have a demo in the Magic Box Prestige portfolios where I, I do a demo of uh, Nick Bottom from A Midsummer Night's Stream. I do a new version of that character, and I think probably most people know Nick Bottom is transformed in the play, and his head becomes a donkey head, and uh, and so it has to look like a donkey, right? I want it to be uh -huh. wacky and cartoony, but it has to be still recognizable as a donkey. So how do you do that? Right. And part of it is, well, you keep pushing the design, you keep pushing the dynamism of the shape contrast, you keep pushing this sort of uh, conceit, the kind of stylistic conceit. And you do that until it stops looking like a donkey, you know, and then when it stops mm -hmm. looking like a donkey, when you can no longer recognize that, well, okay, well, that was too far. Now I know where the line yeah. is. Anyway, can you share about where you're at there, you know, maybe a little bit about, you know, behind the work, but then also, um, we, I mean, cause we haven't talked in a couple of weeks. So I'm curious about just, you know, where your head's at, you know, now with, in regard to this idea of, of pushing the design. Yeah. Well, when I first started with, um, the mentorship, the clockwork heart, um, I was deeply into wanting to do storyboarding, um, being a part of the background essentially, and just kind of help tell a story, whatever story it might be. And then um, as I was exploring the different characters and their poses and everything throughout the storyboarding with the suitor, and we talked about, um, you know, the expressions and how like there's, there's something there that 
I needed to touch on, and we moved on to the, the um, this dust to dust project through the the most recent sprint. And I didn't realize how much fun I was having with this until I started doing all those wacky noses and all those wacky <laughs> like gestures with the dust mics. And I was, you know, we. You basically, you know, we touched base on that and you said, you know, there's a lot of really promising character design elements here. And I'm like, and even though I love character design, I don't want to rely on that as my career goal because that's such a competitive market. So, you know, doing all of this and going back and especially going back in my portfolio and realizing, you know, that there is still, you know, story elements in the characters and I'm designing, I'm kind of, um, I guess I'm just trying to uh, find a, a happy mi middle in there. And that's, that's currently where I am. You know, how do I go for this character design portfolio, make that my main goal, or do I still go for the storyboarding or do I just come up with both mm -hmm. portfolios and just do what I can? Yeah, I mean, my opinion there is is storyboard portfolio with really great character designs in it. Yeah, you know, uh, and then go for the story jobs, and then and then if a character design job comes up, then yeah, why not? But I kind of think right. of this as a you know, yeah, I think that's a good strategy. And and of course, this is something we didn't talk about at the beginning, but you know, you have um, you know, a lot of experience as an illustrator and working in publishing, and yes. so uh, there is this kind of sequential storytelling background that you also have that we're you know all things in time right but we're we're hybridizing uh into a story portfolio and then we discuss other supplemental things for storyboarding and, and on and on so that's a whole kind of mm -hmm. journey but um yeah but i think uh um it is not uncommon for for in animation at least for people to uh take a character design almost right out of the storyboards you know they won't have a design yet and then i mean working as a character designer in animation yeah. this has happened to me you know where they said well the director really likes what the storyboard artist is like okay well my thumbnail's done you know yep. <laughs> uh, and so um you know this is a thing that that can happen you know branding as a storyboard artist i think strategically is a good idea but mm -hmm. you know don't hide your light you know really, right you know and especially on socials and things stories not impossible, but hard to share, harder to share on social than I think character design is. Yes. And so characters mm -hmm. can also be these sort of like icons of a story sequence. You know, you can create a little moment of just the characters interacting a little vignette that works well on a social sort of display, but then swipe for the full sequence or swipe for the video to watch the animatic of the full sequence or so on. Point, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because social is about the interruption, catching, you know, catching the attention. Right. So you catch with the characters <laughs> and then go on to, you know, tell, tell, but there's more where that came from kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, mentors, what do you think? I think it's super fun. It's just super mm -hmm. fun. Uh, I, 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 I grew up watching Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. It's like one of my very favourite TV, TV series ever just because of the characters and how fun they are. And seeing this exploration, it just sort of, that sort of, that sort of fun and wacky. I just love it. And your portfolio also, you know, it it, it displays the fact you can actually draw. You know, you, you, you don't, don't just have to do these wacky, silly shapes. You can actually draw and you can actually design really cool characters like that woman at the beginning. It's just, yeah, technically really really great yeah. um i um i the only thing i can think of at the minute to maybe make it even better is to uh draw the characters interacting with another character more so you get a bigger sense of their personality when they're with someone else mm -hmm. um or yeah. interacting with a thing like a prop um for example i don't know getting dressed or putting a dress on like how would sure. this character put the dress on would they would they struggle to get in it and get stuck halfway i don't know <laughs> you know mm. stuff stuff like that to help tell story through the character yeah that um, was something i was gonna oh i'm sorry amy oh no i'm sorry i finished i'm done <laughs> okay cool that was something i was gonna ping off of you amy is that 
you know, Katie, especially since you mentioned that story is the main thing you're trying to break in with, like, I see the little skin flakes guy eating his cereal. I see, you know, like those little moments and just like, it's just so good. Like, it's so funny. Like you cannot help but smiling when you see it. And so I think just like, like Amy was saying, having little moments like that one, where like you look at this whole page and like, they're fantastic, but I just keep coming back to him because, you know, he's doing something. It's so unique. It's so funny. It like, it showcases your sense of humor, your drawing skill, and your ability to tell story all in that one little compact piece. And so I think that you're just, you know, more of that will really, really heighten, like, you know, it'll take the focus, like, obviously you've got great character designs, but it will really take that focus back to the story and to the heart of, you know, what you're trying to achieve, because then, you know, we can look at cool characters all day, but what you've got that's really special is these weird little, you know, like I've never seen something like skin flakes. Like that's just, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Brian McDonald who you know is we we love him he's uh if you don't know brian mcdonald go get his books invisible ink you can start there and check out his uh, youtube videos he's amazing and he's a personal f uh, friend and a mentor to many of us here uh and i you know some people have mentioned oatly academy i you know probably a lot of you know you know we've been oatly academy but now we're trying to rebrand as magic box and then room two is our career site so room two is the career site and then and then magic box is the technical stuff character design digital painting etc it's all the art making stuff is at magic box the reason for that is you know though i hope to be doing this another three decades or so uh you know i'm not gonna be able to do it forever and so you know the oatly is gonna have to go away someday um and so better to to do that sooner than later i think um but that said, um, Brian, you know, he's sort of this, uh, he's kind of the patron saint of, uh, of Oatly Academy <laughs> in a lot of ways. He would hate that I just said that. Um, I hope he's not <laughs> listening to this. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but, you know, um, when he made Whiteface, his, his uh, film Whiteface, it got uh, picked up by HBO and won all these awards and it's amazing. I think it's online somewhere. Just go look up Brian McDonald Whiteface. It's inc an incredible short, funny, but also incredibly uh, compelling. Just really great. Um, when he made that, and the, the film is about what if clowns were a race of people and they were, they really looked like that. They looked like clowns. It wasn't makeup. <laughs> and, uh, and so that's the what if. And, uh, and so what he did when he wrote the script for that was the first thing he did. It was just, he just brainstormed everything he could think of that was clown stuff. And then just kind of went through like, okay, we've got to find a way to work that in. We've got to find a way to work that in. got to find a way to work that in sort of this, um, to do list almost. And so, you know, skin flakes, right. Is one of those, <laughs> one of those dust mite things. And I would say, yeah, the <laughs> dust bunnies and the dust mites go and try and just think of everything you can possibly think of to, to, to list, you know, every association you can make with that to, to then go illustrate the world. And when I say the world, I don't just mean mm -hmm. the environments, but I mean, you know, obviously the interactions of the characters that populate the world. Bradley, right. anything you wanted to? Yeah. Contribute? So I, I think, I think you're, you got a real problem on your hands and that is that you are just swimming <laughs> in really good things and opportunities and directions you could go in and right. uh that's just the worst <laughs> problem you could possibly have oh no i know right <laughs> so um you know it in listening to this conversation it just it brings to mind one name mark mm -hmm. davis mm. oh yes one of disney's nine old men he went on to do disneyland right i think that his one of his genius and your genius are on very similar wavelengths. Um, and it, if like Veronica and Amy said, you were to take each one of these, every numbered one you've got here and put it into a context, you'd have a storyboard portfolio. Because like okay. you're, you, you could, just like people don't, 
always storyboard out the whole movie. They they have specialties, you know, like the types of scenes, right? right? You know, there's I have a friend who does storyboarding who just does fight scenes because that's he's a he's a Muay Thai fighter and that's his deal. So he okay. Um, so you you could specialize uh, in this sort of like like these antics. Things. Yeah, antics antics that's that's great antics yeah and and by doing that i think you would also find that your like what what people would would hire you to do and your specific voice would would converge um likewise i think that on, on the first page um mm-hmm. oats that uh, even literally on page one w- with your name um like that character yeah. design that's a home run. I mean, that, that's just (laughs) staggering. And I, when I saw that, I was like, oh man, if this portfolio is full of these, I got nothing to say. Like there is, (laughs) there is no reason for me to be in the room. Right. Um, But I contrast that with your turnarounds of the other character. uh, Yes. I'm actually reworking that one. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I, when I look at all of the rest of these drawings, they're all fantastic, but if they if if every single one of them had a little bit more of that charismatic shape mm-hmm. from that first yeah. character, I, I mean, it's just it like yeah, I th- I just think that the the whole the whole range of opportunities can open up for you because like this page, everybody every single view mm-hmm. in this page is is darling and it's. It's just great. And you can tell exactly who, who that character is and whatnot. The only the only way I think to improve it would be to it would be to hit that sort of stylized shape language that you got yeah. on that on that front page. Yeah, I was just about um, to say, like I think incorporating shape language all the way through, which of course we have we have we address shape language many times yes. throughout uh Magic Box mm-hmm. Prestige portfolios. Okay, so we can we have a lot that we can cover in that. Actually, I've, um, I've got a book called uh, Funny 25 Years of Laughter from the Pixar mm. Story Room. I was just trying to find it then. It's not oh. on this bookshelf, but it's amazing. I'm going to link it in the chat, and it's full of, just like your your skin flake sketch, it's full of the like, story department in Pixar, just doing random little sketches with the characters, interacting and doing things. And it's just hilarious, and it's brilliant. Cause it's And it's just a portfolio of... Story. I never heard of that before. Yeah, I definitely Amazing. want that book. <laughs> no problem. I'll I'll link it in the chat. Yeah. Thank you. I, I okay. go I go look at Mark Davis's work from both the the animation industry and the theme park, the his sort of second sure. career designing theme parks, and just see how he like all all he did was think of funny moments like this and put them in context, and then he made Walt Disney laugh, and then he just got the keys to the kingdom basically, and like. <laughs> But that that is a unique skill set. That is a very unique skill set that not every character designer has, not every storyboard artist has, not every kid lit person has. You know, whatever whatever venue you want to take that skill set to, will welcome you because it's it's um, it it doesn't come along in every portfolio. Okay, thank you. Very strong. Thank you, Katie, uh, for for bringing your work and and making it happen there even with the uh, with other holiday plans uh taking place <laughs> no i really appreciate it thank you so much guys really fun and thank you for the tremendously entertaining <laughs> portfolio it's just oh, so good we'll do carmen's in one moment i do want to take just a moment here and make sure that i'm answering questions and then we'll do our last portfolio uh environment design which is uh epic as an epic portfolio friends um team what 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 are some questions that you might want to highlight that you think we should um i saw a couple there uh, yeah, yeah i think me. the one we got recently um a few of those we tried to answer in the chat i can Fantastic. read them again if you want to you know uh, give us whatever your you take. think um, but you think. melissa asked uh like a few minutes ago during Mercuria's uh, review um she asked uh and and thank you mona for like getting this one um how do you show your personality in your work how is it that people say oh that artist so you um how do you not get lost in the shuffle mm-hmm. along along with other artists who can do similar techniques mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. sorry 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I think part of that is um, is that's why we need peers and mentors. I think community is key to that. Um, and I think that uh, you know because you need people to to call it out. I have a a lesson in we're doing a free course called "You're a Better Artist Than You Think." on our room two site. And I have a lesson that's coming up about that, about that exact thing. So I'll, uh, I'll it was that Melissa Jimenez. Yeah. Um, Melissa, I'll, I'll make sure you get it when, when we publish that, or I can even when in class, we can even talk about it. Um, so I'll save time now just cause it will be going out, uh, into the world. Um, But I think, you know, this is something that Melquia hinted at a little bit there during the conversation about her portfolio. You know, you have to have hell yeses, of course, right? You have to have things you like. And But I th I think, obviously, Melquia uh, feels the same way. I think this is, well, a lot of us feel this way. You have, um, you have to have your hell no's also. And I think we're really afraid to hate stuff. <laughs> you know, like we're really afraid to hate stuff. Um, and I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, you know, hate is a, that's a really loaded word and probably, I probably shouldn't even use that word actually, to be honest. But, um, you know, I think, I think, um, we're afraid to have an opinion, a critical opinion about something, but then it's like, we're a, um, but it can make us afraid to be critical. But the thing is we're professionals in an industry, right? If you take any other industry, you have to be able to go and identify things that are not meeting spec. You know, it's not personal. It's just not meeting spec. And so, you know, um, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the thing. I think it's important to also identify things that you really think are flawed and why, you know, I think that's important. Um, I think it's, be, it's important to be able to back them up with craft, you know, and knowledge of the craft. It's not just purely an abstract emotional, you know, response, but when we have an abstract emotional response to something, we explore it and go, you know, why did I hate that? <laughs> you know, or why didn't it resonate? Or why do I think they fumbled the, the end of that story or, you know, so on and so forth. And we, you know, we don't have to go broadcast that, right? We can have conversations with trusted friends about the strengths, you know, or weaknesses of a particular movie or, you know, story or, or whatever. But, um, but I think it's important. I think it's important to develop that criticism and understand why. I think that's part of it because it starts to help you understand who you are, you know, just as much as the things you like. I think those are, it's sort of a, a yin yang sort of thing. Melquia, you wanted to chime in about that? Yeah, actually, I think you like you got that right there where it's like who you are and what you like. Um, a lot of my work, even though I'm in Kidlet, I have been thoroughly inspired by animation uh, and concept art, actually, um, way back in the day, back in the old DeviantArt days. <laughs> mm. One of the things I love about animation is just the character acting and interacting in between mm. characters and I'm in a different industry than animation in a sense. And it's like, how do I take those elements and weave it into what I want to do? And a lot of it is just with a lot of exploration, a lot of drawing and a lot of ex just exploring just what are the things that really resonate with me? And I still struggle with how do I like, it's just like, how, how do you know me through my work? I don't, I don't know, but then I realize that it's like, well, actually, a lot of my characters have little elements of myself, of like little things of myself or little things of people that I know, or a lot of things or like little mini stories um, are a little bit of being being a contrarian. For example, one of the two of the there's an illustration that's actually one of my most recent ones of you know uh, a father figure giving uh, painting the nails of his son. Um, and the father figure is not a act, you know, like what we consider what a black dad looks like, you know, when we think of a black male father figure. And it is a little bit of a contrarian of like, why not? Why can't a you know a parent be this or a kid have this or uh, you know, and so 
a little bit of weaving that in those those little and it doesn't have to be big things um trying to speak through your art is really difficult I'm still figuring out how do I say things with my work but then I think about those little things of like oh yeah well yeah well why not this little this little element of something of illustrating that and normalizing it um I hope that answered a little bit of the question but a lot of it is in self journey but also with mentorship and with peers to to help guide you and uh, highlight those strengths that you didn't even know you have. I also Mentors think it's something that you you can't you can't force. Like ultimately, you know, it 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 comes online for people sometimes early in their career, and it's a foundational element. And sometimes it's something that you find along the way. Um, and I, I think editing also is key, right? The the hell knows. Sometimes there are things that you're interested in that have to become hell knows, right? Um, like I, I said in the chat, I went to school with Stan Prokopenko and those guys down at, at the Watts Atelier. And man, that that was like, you got on that freight train and you were headed to figure drawing mastery, like no matter what. And one of the instructors there had to uh, pull me aside and say like, okay, you're good enough at this where it's it's a tool in your toolbox. And if you keep going, you're just doing it to master figure drawing. But if you want, if your goal is somewhere else, then you have to let go of this and go in that direction. And it was one of the smartest things I I got from that school was just that like you you may love something, you may be very interested in it, and you may have to set it aside to find something that is truer to what you, who you are and what your goals are and, um, and edit that out of, you know, your daily practice or, or, or your, you know, trying to do everything all at once kind of a thing. I, I just think that that's a process that we're all going through by default as artists and learning to be artists. And you just, you know, It'll happen for some people really fast and it'll happen sort of slower for other people, but it's happening to all of us. Melissa just said it's hard to let go. And, and yeah, obviously. And, and what, in like, what is letting go, right? Sometimes letting go is just holding something more loosely. It's not actually letting it go. Like it's gone forever. It's just holding it more loosely. Or sometimes it's just setting it down for a moment because, you know, we're trying to carry too much. There's all kinds of things that we can unpack and explore there. And I mean, just for context, Melissa just joined magic box and so um so we're gonna we're gonna have a great time Melissa it's gonna be great don't you worry don't you worry it's gonna be it's gonna be good yeah really looking forward to working with you and th and that was true prior to this conversation I your emails and comments and things I'm already like oh I'm very excited about oh good Melissa says feel very welcomed you are welcome uh Okay, well, let's let's keep moving here. Any other questions, team, that we should address? I want it, we're getting real tight on time. Well, we're over time now, so I want um, I want to keep things moving. But. There were there were two. I think they were mostly addressed in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, I can read them quickly and let me know if you want to add anything. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. So um, Yuki mentioned during Nastalan's review. Um, I often wonder how people decide what they want to do, what they want their art to say, and how to tailor that to a job. I think it relates a bit to what you were already saying, um, but let me know. Uh, and then the other question, which this one uh, Amy answered in the chat, but let me know if you want to add anything. Um, is it okay if the, uh, Catherine asked, um, is it okay if the eager beginner doesn't have a portfolio to show, do you need to have a finished do you need to have finished the previous Magic Box course to take this one? Mm -mm. And no, this is brand new and it is designed. I mean, we've been closed since 2017. So it is designed for people to be able to, to come in. And, and it is in many ways a primer course. And then we have three different tracks. We have a beginner track, uh, uh, an intermediate track, and an advanced track. Um, and you, you'll notice in the uh, first impressions feedback, People were no, were noting how you know it's really compatible with all skill levels. This is something we've been trying since 2012 
to really figure out. And I think we have a really unique, I think it's unique, um, a, maybe it's not, but I think it is unique uh, approach to making, uh, you know, a course that has, it is, it is a challenging course, because I don't think there's a point in enrolling in a course, if it's not challenging, that's why we take a course. But there are three different challenge levels. And then furthermore, you can, you have the, you get access to all three challenge levels at the beginning. So you could, for example, start on beginner and then move up to intermediate if you're starting to feel stronger as you go. Or you could go through the entire course on a beginner track, and then go through it two more times in intermediate and advanced, you could literally just do it twice more. Uh, the, and that's how we always design lessons, not just for this course, but all of our courses, we design lessons, so that they're the gift that keeps on giving they're ones that you can just keep using over and over and over again, a lot of us folks here who have been through previous courses that we've done can attest to that, right? They'll go back and reference things. I mean, like once a week. In fact, just this week, I was talking to someone and they were like, hey, what was the lesson in painting drama that was about the, you know, and I'm going, I think that was this. And, you know, so they're, they're designed to be these resources that you can use forever. You know, it's not just like eight weeks and then it's over, you know? Um, I just, yeah, I don't see the point in that. Um, I feel like that's sort of like, it's kind of like, there's some sort of like codependency sort of designed into that. And I don't want to do that. I'm like, my job is to, in the amount of time we have, empower you as much as I possibly can. You know, that's, that's the, my responsibility to you. And I know the mentors in the team feel the same way there. Um, the other question, choosing how you want to do, there's a lot of things, but I would refer you to one thing that I think would be helpful. There is an interview that I did with Mark Schiff and Lauren Panapinto. It wasn't that long ago, but you can find it on my website, chrisoatley.com, or you can find it on my YouTube channel, which is at Chris Oatley. And uh, it's called something like Keys to a Long and Healthy Illustration Career. There's a butterfly in a Speedo um, <laughs> is the art on the... Uh, on the on the video uh and uh, if you just go listen to that i think that will help to i mean there's obviously more to discuss we can we can unpack other things but um but i think that'll be be helpful i would refer you to that uh where i talk on I talk about trying on different outfits you know trying on different outfits okay um thank you team for collecting those uh and then uh let's let's go to carmen now and Bradley, I was hoping you could uh, kind of steer the ship a bit on on this one. Carmen, uh, give us a little context here. I mean, you know, I know the story, obviously, but a lot of whoa, a lot of people don't. Uh, so help us. Yeah. So, um, like, I think at heart, I'm a concept artist, uh, but I've started to focus more on environment art, which is a more technical role. Um, and I really want to get into games. So um, I'm focusing more like this past year, I've been focusing on learning 3D art and learning Unreal Engine. So all these things were built in Unreal. This one I like in particular, I just did mm. this one that if you stare at the top image for a minute, it actually moves and changes. Um, it's very subtle, but um, or the very top one, the video. Oh, this one. Here. It's like, yeah, I just... So that was like me experimenting with um, actually making moving elements. So I've been learning like materials. Um, so I've learned how to use the material editor in Unreal Engine, which um, like it, it was a little bit daunting at first, but it, you know, now it's kind of become a fun thing. And so I can really see myself um, having or like going into a technical role as an environment artist. Um, so I guess in my portfolio, I'm trying to show that I can not only build 3D assets, but um, assemble them into environments that are pleasing um, and show that I understand fundamentals. So I'm trying to like show my composition skills along with like my technical skills. So I don't want to just show that I'm like good at 3D modeling. I want to show that I can actually create an environment. Um, so yeah, this this one here is one that I just did the other day from modular pieces that I built a few months ago. Um, and then I added in some new things that from skills that I just learned, like that holographic thing. Um, and then plus I just learned how to 
use the camera inside of Unreal. So I was able to make like cinematic shots. <laughs> so like every time I learn a new skill, um, I keep going back and like upgrading my older concepts. <laughs> So it's fantastic. Yeah. There's so much variety. You know, that's the thing that I think is just, um, yeah, you know, you, I remember one of the first times we ever had a conversation this a few years ago was painting drama. I think that was your first mm -hmm. course. Yeah. And I, it was back then. And I remember you just saying you really, the thing that just is your, you know, you're most passionate about is immersive worlds. And mm -hmm. then that started a journey of going, okay, we'll do that, right? I mean, make them immersive. And we've had lots yeah. of conversations about what does that mean, immersive? And especially mm -hmm. what does it mean in a portfolio versus like, well, sure, when you have a game that's immersive, if you can really go play the game, but you know, how do you make it feel immersive when you have to when you have to post it on art station or whatever? And mm -hmm. I mean, you it's just like that I want to go to there. <laughs> that's <Yay>. incredible. Anyway. <laughs> I'm talking, Bradley, please, uh, you, you know, uh, I'm geeking out. Save me from my geek out, Bradley. <laughs> Carmen, what's your favorite video game? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> my favorite favorite um, in my life is Riven, the sequel to Myst. And uh, Chris knows that. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. um, yeah, Riven is like... I don't know if you know that game or remember that. It's kind of like, it was popular in 1999. <laughs> uh, so was I. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, it's like, it was a point and click game, but I love how like strange and mysterious it felt. And it like really took you to another world. There's no, there are no characters in that game. Or there was like two characters that you saw like one time. Um, but it was, I love the like eerie feeling that you get um, from exploring this world and it wasn't quite sci-fi, it wasn't quite fantasy. So like, that's kind of what I'm interested in is just exploring mysterious worlds and just creating like interesting moods and atmospheres. Right, right. So I think one of the things that, uh, you know, sort of overlaps between the world that I inhabit in theme park design and video game design is um you have to do two things at once you have to draw people through the environment but you mm -hmm. also have to give them stuff within it that captures their attention which is a really tricky balance to do right so mm -hmm. um so i think what you're what you've got is some beautiful environments that you want to poke around in and and look around and enjoy they're all setting a pretty good mood. Like they, you know, you, your technical skills show through without a doubt. Um, Thanks. <laughs> I, I think the thing to to make them stronger is to um, is to think about sort of like waypoints and how you get people from point A to point B and have them look at a couple of things along the way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And the way I have sort of tuned my brain to that is to go back to, to let's say, go back to your favorite game, if, you know, games from 99. I don't know if they boot up anymore, but maybe there's just YouTube <laughs> videos and um, start making lists, making lists of the ways that the, that they make you move through the scene what do they use to entice you to get there? Maybe it's a shaft of light. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a open doorway. Maybe, you know, list, just come up with like, just in your notebooks or whatever, just a comprehensive list of techniques that they use to pull you through, right? And mm -hmm. then um, also pay attention to where you stop along the way. So, uh, you know, you're going through this, this dark room, there's a shaft of light, there's one door that's got a crack open. You know you're supposed to go through there, but you also know you're supposed to stop and look at the dead body on the floor on the way there, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you, you know, and, and not everything, um, it's tough because in 2D pictures, you kind of, you're tempted to give people the entrance and the exit of your space. 
Mm -hmm. um, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just do the the corner that you have to go around, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so what, when I look at your, your videos sort of moving through the space, um, they do show your technical proficiency, but the... Um, the ability to sort of like go you, you don't see the exit necessarily from the mm. from the room you're in mm -hmm. i think um and the and and it's a it's a design concept that's a little bit different than the design concepts we sort of talk about when we're drawing or whatever in sort mm -hmm. of like how to make things how to make things more interesting using shapes and all of that stuff this is more attention uh you know you're sort of paying attention to people's focus right right and so um so i think the the other thing that could really benefit your portfolio um would be to just build some vignetted props in 3d like a stack of junk or whatever that's mm. interesting enough to look at but isn't necessarily the thing that isn't necessarily the destination right mm -hmm. um and and then that way you can uh then showcase with the little videos like i put i took this prop here and that's over in this corner and i took this prop here and that's over here and then this is how you move how you would move through the space how we would want the players to move through the space uh-huh and that being okay, kind yeah. of a dominant subdominant subordinate arrangement yeah for sure for sure all all of your compositional skills will come come into play in ev in everything. In fact, even more so because you're dealing in three dimensions with movement and theoretically with camera movement as well. Mm -hmm. So there's some stuff, you know, in every video game, there's stuff that you're supposed to look at, but you don't mm -hmm. actually go to, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I I think that um, you you. In, a, in terms of just assembling the portfolio, you try not to bite off more than you can chew in any one picture. Right. right. So I think that if you um, if you showed through the series of pictures that you can make the environment, you can show people how to get through it, and then you can show people what you're going to see along the way, I think that that is probably more than enough to uh, to make your uh you know environment artist career dreams start to happen cool but that, that makes a lot that... of sense okay good yeah but yeah and i i realize like in a lot of my pieces because i get so excited to um move on to the next concept i like a lot of them i think are missing like those focal points um so i do that is something that i do want to add into my pieces is like have different areas that are meant to draw in the person instead of just like showing off the whole scene. Um, right. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And I, I think you can you can show if you show them in the context. Like I love how you have the little videos that that show you moving through. So if you could if you could make a portfolio piece out of out of a chunk of it you know, like a, mm -hmm. a, a still image out of a chunk of it. Like I designed this thing. Here's a, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, a, a, a pirate ship. And mm -hmm. that's what that looks like. And then here's it in the context mm -hmm. of the environment mm -hmm. in the video. Uh, you know, I think you'll start showcasing the skills that, that, um, that people would want to see. Okay, cool. That's great. Yeah, thank you. That it's, does that does make a lot of sense. So that just that gives me like some direction for the next pieces that I work on. Um, yeah, and, whatever and you know the, the other thing to remember is like that there are, you know, for each aspect of of a video game environment, there is a specialist that just mm -hmm. does that just does lighting, that just does yeah. reflections, that just does you know all of the different technical jobs get broken down into further technical jobs, right? Um, and so you you don't you don't have to be excellent at all of them because it is nearly impossible to be excellent yeah. at all of them. That's why there are so many technical jobs in that field. Yeah. Um, but if you can show how you're using each of the tools, 
um, and that you're capable of using each of the tools, then um, I think that that is also very reassuring to mm. to people in the that are looking at portfolios in that in that line of work. But yeah, that's a good point. I, I do have to keep reminding myself that like I don't have to be able to do everything. Um, however, I do think it, it does seem to vary from studio to studio where like some, like you have one person doing a lot of different roles and then other studios, like in a triple A studio, you might be like in a more specialized role. Um, so yeah, it's a, a little bit of a challenge. And also I, I feel like as technology has, has evolved, the roles have kind of changed mm -hmm. or like merged into one. <laughs> yeah, it, for sure. From what I've noticed. So, and I, I mean, like you know, you 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 could also find roles that are not that are sort of off the beaten path. They do visualizations like this in theme park design all the time, and oh, okay. you'd find that most art directors in that business don't have a clue how to do that. Um, uh, yeah. And so they just hire you as the expert, and they would just say like, "Okay, well, this is our this is our thing. Here's some storyboards. Here's a model uh, in SketchUp." make us a cool what they call a fly through mm -hmm. um and you know there's 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 firms out there that just specialize in that one deliverable of a fly through of a theme park environment and it looks an awful lot like what you've got in your portfolio so that you know there there are um there are other avenues for these these skills in a, in addition to video games yeah, well that's reassuring mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially since I'm learning on my own, just like figuring it out. So <laughs> you're doing a great job. You're doing far better learning it than I did. Uh, I mean, I just, yeah, sometimes that it, the more complex 3D gets, the more my brain just goes, no, 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 this is not where we're <laughs> supposed to go. <laughs> and uh, I, I definitely struggled with it. <laughs> it's tough. It's real tough. Um, so I, I do think that and I'll shut up so that the other mentors could chime in here, but I do think that like the, the technical proficiency that you currently show combined with, a, you know, a, um, a little bit more purposeful storytelling um, mm -hmm. in, in that the story is as simple as you're going from point A to point B, and this is how we're going to get you there, um, mm -hmm. I think would make, make for a really strong professional level portfolio that will, will unlock all kinds of doors for you. Cool. Wow. Thank you so much for that. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I definitely want to work on the storytelling elements of my pieces since like I'm so focused on the visuals that sometimes I forget that I'm also telling a story. So that's something I definitely need to think about more. How about Amy? Maybe yeah. Hi, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, it, it, some of my points are bouncing off what Chris said, but you know, having a look at all your the variety of um, types of environments you've done, obviously you're technically able to design compositionally design a really you know really well thought out um, and technically advanced pieces. Um, I think what could really really make it great is if you, for example, took one of your concepts, um, for example, maybe the the third one along on the top, just for example. Um, yeah, and, you know, forget about the rest for a minute. If you just really, you know, take this one and, exp like, really explore it. So, you know, different different designs of the the, the leafy structures um, in either individually and, you know, in little bunches and then all together in a different angle of the world. Maybe, mm. like, you know, how does the world look like? What does the world look like through um, from more of an aerial um perspective and you know just really go in to this one world and, and explore it thoroughly so you have a big chunk of work that you know really carves out this world and if you did that for a couple of them I think that would help bring out the story of you know what what each environment is um and, mm -hmm. and you know who lives there and it, it it help with the whole visual storytelling aspect of your portfolio but you know, technically, it's I think it's really really great. I mean, I don't have a, a bloody clue about three D. Um, <laughs> I've dabbled in Blender a little bit when I was on Moomins, but uh, nah, I I leave that to the three D people. I'm just like I just want to paint, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks great. 
Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a good point though. Like I, and this is something I've been conscious of as well is that I do need to do more um, like explorations. Cause like a lot of times I get locked into an idea and then I just like take that idea a hundred percent instead of like spending more time, like doing visual explorations of guilty, things yeah, and it, yeah. iterating and everything. So like, yeah. cause then I get too excited to move on to the next idea. So I, I do kind of want to go back to some of the, I, like the concepts that I had before and then do like more variations to show <laughs> that I can actually like do some visual development with them and not um, yeah. stick to one idea. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. How about so Veronica, you want to wrap it up for us? Sure. Yeah. A lot of good points already, but one that I was really thinking about is that idea of like uh, when Chris Bradley was talking about the props and like, I think something I'm really thinking about is finding a way to show the story of the people who live in these environments and mm. what they're doing, what their lives are like, uh, and not necessarily by showing the characters, but more showing mm. the effects of those characters. So like, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be extremely explicit what, you know, like exactly you know shot for shot what has happened there but just this general sense like you know oh did somebody you know bend a leaf there or is there some like book that's kind of set askew because someone has just put it down or you know are is there an empty bowl of like in the little ramen uh mm -hmm. cyberpunk one is there an empty bowl with like little chopsticks somewhere like mm -hmm. you know think signs of life uh, that I think will make, because uh, Chris mentioned immersion and how you've been talking about that. And I think those little things are so small and yet they add so much to that feeling of immersion where like you'll mm -hmm. get a sense of someone lives there, someone's interacting in that environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are, yeah, those are really good points. Um, and yeah, I do need to, or this is something I also think about a lot too, is like adding things in that um, show evidence of people having been there and like um, like a larger world that it's connected to. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's something like, I'm glad you noticed that because that is something I need to work on too. <laughs> so yeah. But anyway, thank you, Veronica. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think you've really nailed that uncanny aspect from Mist and Riven, like as you just, it's bullseye, like you nailed wow. the uncanny <laughs> quality. So I think you, it's mission accomplished. You've done exactly what you were trying to do, which I mean, that is not easy. <laughs> that is not easy. You know, I have a <laughs> mood in my head and I'm trying to make that visual and then communicate effectively and accurately to someone else. Like, mm -hmm. It's magic, right? I mean, that's one oh. of the reasons we call it the magic <laughs> box. Um, and I think that part of it, you know, somebody said earlier, you know, something that I, I love as as portfolio advice, which is you are what you you are what you eat, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is now going, you know, and I know you have a variety of of influences. I mean, mist and ribbon are those aren't your only influences, obviously, but right. um <laughs> but moving that analysis lens now to something else, you know, going into, you know, Resi 4, Resident Evil 4, you know, that like, just as an example, you know, or God mm -hmm. of War, something like this, that just has this kind of incredible environmental storytelling in it, you know, mm -hmm. or I mean, we could go on, there's a lot of great examples in games, right? Um, but, uh, but trying to move that analysis now into the things these the other mentors were talking about, and how to execute those things because now you know how to do the uncanny mm -hmm. vibe you know how to do that and so yeah it's it's sort of take the same analysis lens yeah and now just shift it over you know you're not you're not leaving that vibe you're just an analyzing something different mm -hmm. you know like chris said the 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 progression i'm going over here but then i stop and look at this mm -hmm. you know yeah, uh, that makes sense. Vignette on the way. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like part of that will come from like a little bit more focus um, into like thinking about the concepts. Cause I feel like a lot of my concepts are a bit vague. So I feel like taking one of those concepts and expanding it more and um, uh, adding, adding more life to it and uh, hinting at a larger world and everything. Yeah. I feel like that will help. 
well, and, and, and you're going to do it. I mean, <laughs> what you, you what you've accomplished is incredible. You and so now it's just like okay, next step, right? That's it. I mean, you will you will pull it off. Wow. Well, that gives me a lot of hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm certain of it. Um, team, Mari, Mona, thank you so much for hanging out today and helping and supporting us, and not just today, but every day that you help this whole thing go. So often, you know, you're work is behind the scenes and people don't realize how crucial you are to what, what we do here. So thank you for that. Um, Andrea, thank you so much for sharing your process and for such a, just a wonderful, inspiring conversation. Thank you guest artists. I'm trying to find you in the, in the grid of humans. Uh, here's Nastaran, Carmen, Rami, Melquia, Katie, and did I did I get everybody? <laughs> I'm trying to find everyone. Um, uh, yeah, I get. Yes, okay. All right, that's everybody, right? All right, and then thank you to the mentors, uh, Amy, Chris, Veronica. Thank you so much. I learned so much today. Me too. I, I, I mean, I'm ready to go paint. Like <laughs> I'm so fired Same. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I did. I learned so much. I really, that was really inspiring. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who joined live. Thank you everyone for your questions and for just generally bringing a great positive vibe today. Always just wonderful to share time with you. I, it, every time we do this, I'm just like, this is just the best. It's just the best sharing time with you. So um, thank you all. Thank you all so much. And uh, yeah, you can enroll at magicboxacademy.com for one more week. And uh and uh, and then you know we'll, and then TBD we'll we'll see what happens next year but um but yeah I've got another week for enrollment and uh, yeah right thank you Mari if you have any questions just reach out to I say us but usually it's Mari support at chrisoatley.com o a t l e y dot com and uh, anything else that I'm forgetting I guess not nope. yeah okay <laughs> fantastic thank you again everyone. Yeah, everyone.